mute himself. Oh, everyone. I think you can oh, now no. hear us. We are hey. live. Hey. hey. Um, this is the Blue Rose stream, our first major Blue Rose stream, where we're actually going to be playing the game. And Andrew is going to be GMing for us. Um, so, yeah, Andrew, do you want to introduce yourself first? Let's do the GM first. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Andrew. Um, you might know me if you watch the Pyramid stream as Garn of a Barbarian, and today I'm bringing to you one of my favourite... Well, it's hard to say if it's one of my favourites, because this is the first time I've actually been able to play it with a whole group of people, but something I've been very excited to play for a long time, the Blue Rose campaign using the age system, which I have used before. So awesome. I do know the rules. And I know the world very well, but this is the first time playing it. So, yay, I am very excited. Yay. All right. Well, our players like to introduce themselves. We have a guest. So if that's okay, can we just start with our guest, Anna? Hey, everybody. Um, you'll probably see me on chat uh, on other streams as the LBs. I'm one half of the LBs. Um, and today I am playing a character called Ziska, and you will find out more about her later. Awesome. Anne-Marie. Hi, uh, I'm Anne-Marie. Um, I don't know the world or the system or anything about the game at all, but I do get to be feathery and annoying, which is great and really Yay. in keeping with my natural personality, so I'm quite looking forward to it. Yay! I'm Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. Uh, you would recognize me from other streams as Florian or Inurin. And unlike those uh, rambunctious characters, I'm going to try and maybe take it to a different place in this particular stream. And uh, uh, I don't know what all we're saying about ourselves right now. My character name is Doretis. 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 Awesome. I do apologize in advance, by the way. I am going i know in advance brian i'm going to make this mistake i'm going to call him Doretti so many times so there's a magic <laughs> card with the name spelt exactly like that who i use in a lot of my decks called Doretti and it's just oh. hardwired into me to pronounce it yes Doretti. you did just hear so a cat meow gaming ferret mom that is my cat <laughs> so I th if i will try and grab her when she comes back again Sorry. is Doretti and a good is that a good spell or a good card um, he is a planeswalker, so he's actually one of the major characters for a little bit. He is a he's a goblin who um, who's described as the scrap savant. Well, let's take the let's take the well. No, we should keep the S on my name for trade uh, trademark. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on with Doretis. I, I, I'm sure I'll get it. If if I end up doing Doretti way too much, we'll work it in somehow about just all characters mishear you. Everyone in Aldous is deaf and just doesn't hear you the first time. <laughs> Works so it for could me. be a pet name. Like a, just a shortened version of the name. So, That's right. right. Could be. Could be. And I guess that leaves me. I am Jess and I my character is going to be called Carenza but mm. other than that I don't know if we're saying much about our characters. No, you'll have time to introduce yourself. I've worked a sort of way for you all to introduce yourselves in a awesome. minute and get to know each other. Awesome. In that mm. case, I think, would you like to take it away, Andrew? Yeah. So, all of you are currently residing in the country of Aldis, possibly the safest, certainly the most accepting country on the continent at the moment. And it has been a good number of years since the Kurnish forces and the last Lich King were defeated and relative peace brought to the world. As you can imagine, after a major war, things are still settling down. Some nations are scared for the future and ever vigilant for new enemies who might arise. Others, like Aldis, where you are, are celebrating their freedom and liberation and trying to forge a new and better world for themselves. And you find yourself in this country, in the north, by the forests of Pavin Weald. You've all come here from various places, but you are all on a very similar journey to the country's capital of Aldis. So, so Aldis is the capital of Aldis? 
Uh, sorry, Aldus is the capital of, yeah, Aldus is the capital of Aldus, yeah. Right. Yeah, Aldia is the plain, the actual world, so. Right. Yeah, so it's the country of Aldus with the capital also Aldus. So it's like Luxembourg and Luxembourg? Yeah, yeah, essentially. Okay. I forgot about Luxembourg, had that. <laughs> so yeah, you are on your way to the capital, each for your own reason, and your paths have recently converged as you go down the roads there and you all notice that compared to the other travelers who you have seen on the worlds you all seem slightly interesting each in your own way there is a wry creature flying down the path and roads and as much as wry animals intelligent talking animals do exist in the world they are still quite a rare sight so this feathered friend is unusual to say the least there is a rather old and proud looking varta there is a woman with shaven head and a mohawk whose foreign garb suggests she comes from the resian borders and the clans there and their horse folk and she is riding a horse by the way I forgot to mention that, and I need to put a horse in her character sheet later, but that is getting out of character. <laughs> and there is also another woman whose foreign garb suggests she might come from the slightly more dour lands of Jarzan to the south, which puts her very much in the wrong direction of Aldis, the capital. You have been travelling together for about an hour on the roads, safety in numbers and all that, and unless you're feeling all very unsociable and you want this to be a very short campaign, I suggest you introduce <laughs> your, to, yourselves to each other. Otherwise, you can just ignore each other and we'll end here. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly down, uh, since I am the flying rye raven, and land on um, the saddle horn of the person riding the horse and say... Good morning. It's okay if I take a stop here. It's a lovely day for flying, but you know, you can get a bit overflying sometimes and it can be quite tiring. And I see we're all headed the same way. My name's Micah, by the way. You having a good day? I'm having quite a good day. It's a nice day to meet people. <laughs> it's a nice day to be traveling towards somewhere. What's your horse's name? I'm sort of, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of like taken aback because I've heard lots of stories about rye animals, but this is sort of like my first up close encounter of one so I'm sort of like this or like slightly taken aback that it's talking to me oh my goodness there's a right raven talking to me and then I'm sort of like oh right my horse look at it Charlotte uh, this is Charlotte yes it is a pleasant morning um I I'm I'm Ziska it, it's uh, it's an honor to, to meet you um my people talk a lot about about rye animals, um, um, and they're very linked with with uh, with, the, with the twilight gods. Uh, have you have you ever met any? I have, I have, and to be quite honest, between you, me, and the gatepost, they're lovely folk, but they are rather boring after a certain amount of time because you know there's only so much wandering around the woods and you know casting basic magic spells and running away from people who want to eat you that one can do before one feels the need to relocate. So. So yes, I thought I'd go and meet some other people. Um, and so far, it's it's more interesting. We don't have saddles where I come from. On that this point, is... my character's going to go totally running up closer to the horse, like really enthusiastically yeah, bouncing. Kind of, it's 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 it's, it's a right, it's a right. Hi, I'm Karenza. Hi. Hi, yes, I'm a right. It's great to meet you. Who are you? Karenza. I'm Karenza. Hi, Karenza. I'm Micah. How are you? I'm great. Are you are you all going to Aldis? We we are going in the right direction for Aldis, right? I hope so. Are we going in the right direction to Aldous? Do you have to ask your horse? Is your horse in charge? My horse is not in charge. Don't don't tell her that. She often means she is in charge. Uh, but but no, she's not in charge. Um, uh, I think somebody else is in charge. It's been a long time since I've been to Aldous. So uh, so uh, I, I'm hoping we're going the right direction because it's really important I get yeah. there. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna fly up briefly to the horse's head and perch between its ears and go. Don't worry. Don't 
<laughs> okay, given no one else seems to know if we're going in the right direction, I'm going to look around for someone that looks a bit more like they might know if we're going in the right direction. Uh, I'm just going to pause there for a minute on something. I'm going to invite Ziska to make the very first roll of the Ooh. game. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Ziska, okay. would you be willing and... I don't even know why I'm being so polite about this. I'm the GM. I can do what I like. <laughs> I demand <laughs> that you make... Oh, that sounds better, doesn't it? I demand that you make a dexterity riding test using uh -oh. your focus. Okay. How, How does do that, that work? <laughs> so if, you, if you go to your character sheet... Yeah, this yeah. is where we find out if the horse is actually in charge. <laughs> Actually, no, this is where I find out quite crucially whether all the things work correctly. So oh, right. this, I should say this is actually in response to um, just your character. Sorry, I'm dropping okay. the names. Yeah, Terenza. that's in response to you running up very excitedly to the horse and From being behind. a bit okay. full on. So if you go to. Yeah, if you stay on your main character page, the front page. Again. I've renamed myself on Zoom so you can see my ah, character Ah, there we name. go. That's okay. better. So do you see where it says dexterity? Yes. And underneath it says riding two. Can you click riding two and that should let you do a roll? It, it bleeped. Did it? Did that do something? Uh, it did a thing. Yes. It did yes. a thing on the, on the chat. Right, so you have done your roll. Yes. And on the chat, you have got a five, a four, and a two, giving you a total of zero? That is yeah. not... That's not correct. That doesn't look <laughs> right. Not I mean, correct. I'm not the best at maths, but that's not correct. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, the numbers are there, so we can do it ourselves. So five plus four is nine, plus two is 11, and you've got your focus in riding is 13. Is so you are able to keep control of your horse when... Carenza. Uh, Carenza. <laughs> I was going to go with Anna Karenina, but Carenza <laughs> comes forward. Hi, hot pink mess. Hi, gaming. I, we haven't said hi to chat. Oops. Hi, chat. Sorry, everyone. Oh, hi, hi Wolf Song. Hi, the LBs. Like, we could be. Hey! Hey. Gaming for it, Hi, hot pink. Hot pink mess. Bear. You were awesome. Have I said Wolf Song? Who else have we got? Who else have we got? I think that's everyone. Yeah. Hi. Ah, no audio, so. No audio. Sorry. <laughs> right, go. Cool. I think that's everyone. I think I've said hi to everybody. Sorry, you can carry on. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, you've done that. You've managed to keep control of your horse when um, Carenza comes forward to talk okay. to you, so you may continue on talking and getting to know one another for a bit. Yay. Okay. Hopefully, someone else knows <laughs> which is the right yeah. Dray. I, I will, at that point, if, if it doesn't seem like... um. Micah and Ziska know where we're going. No. Yeah. Well, I think I think it might be this way, but frankly, I wanted to go on an adventure, so I'm not terribly bothered about which way we're going. I just saw you guys headed this way and, and thought you looked kind of interesting and, and wanted to sit on a saddle for once. So um, so I just decided to, you know, go the same way. Yeah. Ah, it took me a long yes. while to get here because I, I, I got on a wagon and, and it took me three days to realise it was going in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I, I'd really like to get to Aldous now. Ah, the enthusiasm of youth like a blossoming flower that has not yet been wilted by the many suns of drenching, parching summer, though you shall someday wilt and depart this world. For now, it is beautiful to see such enthusiasm. Oh. We are going the right way. And that's good because you clearly need a drink. Yes. Ah, to imbibe, to drink the nectar of the gods, to remember things past, to forget. Actually, I was thinking more along the lines of beer, but but yeah, ne nectar is good. Get? Nectar is nice, actually. Mm. I don't know. I've not tried it. I've not tried it either. Does we it keep it. you hydrated? It's hard without a beak. Oh. I've watched other animals trying to drink it. It was actually really funny, but um, but they didn't really get to taste it much. They got enough to know that they quite liked it, but then they got kind of frustrated. So yeah. Oh okay. Awesome. It tastes like sunshine, if that helps. 
I've not tasted sunshine either. Can you taste that? Depending on the potion you take first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to laugh at that and I have no idea what it means. Yeah, I'm just sort of going <laughs> to narrow my... I'm going to narrow my eyes at this gentleman too. So like he's, he is confusing me with his very long sentences. This is like, yeah. can't he just get to the point a bit quicker so I can keep focused on what he's saying? <laughs> but I don't vocalise this because that would be rude and everyone would just... So, hi, Mr. Wordy Man. What's your name? Well met, all of you travellers. I am Duretus, and it is a pleasure to make all your acquaintances. New friends! Yay! Are we all going to Algus then? Does seem to be the path that we all trod this day. Or flew. Or, or flew. rode. Hmm. There's only two of, of us actually walking. Yeah. I think Doretta's is the only one who's actually... Well, the horse is walking, to be fair. I'm walking. Well, I'm probably more bouncing, to be honest. Yeah, you're kind of bouncing. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's what's all of your business in Aldous, then? Um, I just got told to go there by the priest. They kicked me out. Apparently, I don't make a very good priest. I, that's a terrible thing to say. I think you'd make a wonderful priest. They could use some happiness in their lives. I, I, I tend to, to, to things kind of go wrong when I try and make things happen. I feel your pain. Yeah. The first spell I cast, half my feathers went red. And oh. then they fell out. Oh, I was going to say that yeah. would be pretty, but not if they fall out. I went around looking like a frog. Oh. I've been tarred and feathered. For a month. Naked as a jaybird, apparently. And she's a raven. Half as naked as a jaybird, which was even worse. Mm. I looked like a jaybird, which had been interrupted in the middle of something which could have been quite enjoyable, but was not. I'm going to leave. Caught red feathered. Lean towards Ziska and be like, "What's a jaybird?" I presume a type of bird from the gist of the conversation. Okay. They're quite. They're quite. They're quite known for their for their um, enthusiasm for life. Oh, okay. I'd probably like them. Yeah, yes. you would. You very much remind me of a jaybird. <laughs> okay, but I don't have feathers either. Believe me, feathers are, are optional when it comes to being like a jaybird. That's that's not the qualifying characteristic. Wonderful. I qualify for something. You qualify. <laughs> Letting me ride on your shoulder, and I'm going to fly over and land on your shoulder. Awesome. Oh, this is a different motion. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, good. I'm gonna feel really pleased about that, and then try not to bounce, but bounce even more. Bounce away. This is all good experimentation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so this continue. Unless anyone's got anything particularly they want to get off their chests immediately. To of a group. This continues for a while. And I've probably banished to talk the entire time. Yep. I'm I'm probably quite happily talk to Micah the entire time. Yeah, so yeah. you spend a enjoyable morning walking together and talking and getting to know one another. It's a brisk day in the Pavin Weald. The winds blowing down out of the Icebinder Mountains serving as a reminder that the cold season is coming and coming soon. Your journey today has been thus far uneventful, save for running across the occasional fellow travellers on the road through the forest. A ways up ahead, however, you take note of a large animal stepping out from the underbrush and mm. onto the path in front of you. A majestic silvery white wolf with clear golden eyes. He sits down on the road, regarding your gradual approach with intelligence and a wary curiosity. Clearly, this is no ordinary animal. I'm going to whisper to Carenza. Is that another rye? No, okay. Is that another rye? Is that another rye? I don't know yet. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You actually, Micah, you would know instinctively that that is another rye just from a thing with that From so you would you'd, right. you'd be able to know that you you, you would have the necessary right, okay. knowledge to know that that's a rye straight okay. away yeah yeah it's rye in that case i'm gonna bounce excitedly up and go hi 
I, I, I've got another right here. Point to the micro on my shoulder and be like, hi, oh. we like rice. Mm. How are you? I, I, I'm Corinza. The wolf, where it sat, stands and sort of backs up a few steps, but then shakes its body and mane a little bit and looks at you. Its look is very intelligent and although, in fact, you know what, let's have some other tests. Would you like to make a perception empathy test? Perception empathy test. Uh, you don't, uh, empathy is the, um, uh, the focus, which you don't have, so it would just be a straight perception, perception? test. So I just click on the word perception? Uh, yep, yeah, click on the word perception and see if dice roll. Oh. Oh, oh, and we've got our first stunt points of the day. This I is exciting. I have no idea what that means. Exactly. This is good. <laughs> this is what I want. <laughs> basically going to be introducing, I'm going to be introducing the rules just as they come up, essentially. Okay. So I am excited for this. So wow. in the roll also, 20 system, yeah. okay. when you roll your 3d6, every mm -hmm. time you get a double, you generate what are called stunts, which mm -hmm. can add on to whatever action you were doing. The, okay. If you look on the um, screen, you can see that one of your die is a different color to the rest. Yeah. And that is known as the drama die. And whenever you roll doubles, it's the drama die, which gives you stunt points. So you have just Ooh. accumulated four stunt points, which you can spend. Okay. Nice. Do I have to spend them now? Um, you do have to spend them now. So just okay. really quickly, okay. this does get quicker as it goes along. It will be quite slow at first, but as you get used to using stunts, you get to know what they are and just go from. So go into what would be role play stunts as you're in a role play stunts. scenario at the moment. Okay. You tag a perfect witty remark onto the end of your action. Probably not me. <laughs> passionate inspiration your emotions flare and you're inspired to a brief act of daring or greatness probably not thing. and another thing you managed to weave a second thrust of conversation into the primary intention of the course of the test sway the crowd your interpersonal efforts are so effective they spill over into others in the area and affect one additional person new friends that sounds like the right one yeah i, I was new gonna friends. say that you can, you can kind of tell by the title sometimes what's needed so i'm gonna do new have, friends yep yeah, and you've got four sp at the moment the important yeah. thing to remember is to look at your thing so you've new friends cost three sp so you can definitely do that one you could also do on top of that when you get stun points i can do flirt for four <laughs> You can flirt with him if you want. <laughs> if you want to just use them all at once, if you want to flirt with the. Um, I think, honestly, wolf. as as the the Rye member of the party, I would suggest new friends because yeah. I am fabulous, but he is bigger yeah. and his claws are a lot bigger, and I only have one beak, whereas he's got a lot of teeth as well. So okay, new in friends. The fight, he could be really i mean you can flirt with him later i'm getting a real sense of deja vu here actually so you can <laughs> flirt with him later um, right but yes. for now i would strongly recommend friendship also i would like to ride on him and if you make him a friend then chances are i might be able to be his friend at some point okay and get to ride on him. i'm gonna go with new friends i'm gonna use okay. my stunt points and new friends Yay. and hi another unique Okay, so if um for those in the chat, new friends, your action impresses, charms, or otherwise makes an NPC in the encounter think better of you. Choose one character who's present, and we will assume it is the dry wolf. Yeah. That character now admires you or thinks of you as a friend. Oh, thank you, another unique, the gifted sub to Reverend. Oh, Rich. thank you. Every time. Yeah. Every awesome. time. It's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> So Sorry. this wolf is actually quite Hi. pleased by your reaction. And despite bristling a bit at first, he quickly settles and you can see his tail wagging behind him Yay! as he psychically communicates to you. It is not often I see such a bubbly reaction from the two legged folk. It is quite refreshing. And he gives a sort of bow to you in recognition and then turns his attention to the rest of you, sending out his psychic communication to you all. Well met, travellers. I am Frostwind, and these woods are my home. I mean no harm to you or your companions. 
I merely wish to speak with you and, if you are willing, to hear me out to ask a favour. I have no means by which to repay you for this request, save my gratitude and my friendship, but I hope you will listen, for I believe that a life, perhaps more than one, hangs in the balance. I, I can help. I will help. I'm, I think we'll I'm, help. I'm totally up for, for helping people in general. And, you know, anyone I can ride on is, is totally, potentially ride on. That came out really strong. Um, so... <laughs> You, you can stay um, on my shoulder. Know. Yay! Is 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 Frostwind specifically speaking to the four of us, or is everyone who's on this like entourage included in this? Just uh, you are you are the entirety of the entourage. Oh right. All, all okay. the other travellers you've met have been going in other directions so far. Oh okay, fair enough then, because I didn't know whether we needed to communicate to anybody else yeah, what was no, going no. on. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to set up and pay a bit more attention to show uh, this right wolf that you know that I'm listening and that you know I care about what he has to say. Okay. Well, Merton, we are open to hearing what is burdening your heart this day. Frostwind pays particular attention to you, Doretis, and your fine manners and way of speech, as he says. My friend Greymane recently came to me with troubling news. While wandering close to the nearby village, indeed closer than might be wise, she stumbled across a human youth gathering mushrooms. She said that the boy had a furtive, wounded look about him, not injured in body, but rather in spirit. And she believes that she felt the stirrings of the wry bond within him. When she attempted to draw nearer, however, an older human with a similar scent, burst out of the brush, brandishing a heavy stick and yelling furiously at her. He grabbed the younger boy by the arm and dragged him away. Greymane ran, frightened at the sheer violence of the display. Since then, she's been telling me that she was troubled and restless. I suspected that she wanted to go back in search of a young human, but I counselled her against this as his farming... His is a farming community reliant on the sorts of animals upon which we wolves prey, and it seems that they do not receive our kind with courtesy. I thought that an end to the matter, as Greymane typically heeds my advice, but I have not seen nor scented her in days now, and I believe that she must have returned for the boy. I would go to look on into the matter myself, but I'm concerned that I would either be killed by the villagers, or else be forced to do harm to them in self-defence. I am more than happy to go and check out people who may have been unkind towards Rye. Yeah, I, I'd quite like to stop them hurting hurting a wolf. That 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 would work. I'm so far, he's just nodding. I'm skilled in. Uh, uh, I'm skilled in protecting others. So if uh, if your friend Greymane is in need of aid, then you have my 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 pole arm and my shield for the cause. I have a great dance. I am glad to have found so many people willing to help and even hear me out. As said, the villagers around here do not take too kindly to us. Not all right, mm. you understand. Mm -hmm. You will probably be quite welcome in the village, mm. but wolves always carry a certain mm. hesitation to them because of our habits okay this is what the wolf looks like by the way yes <laughs> there's frostwind <laughs> you've actually reminded me but i should have changed page for the rest of you i've changed page but you haven't all the players should there be here go. now oh. <laughs> you may need to go out <laughs> there you go so there's frostwind for you I forgot to put you all there. Oh, so pretty. The gaming ferret mum has My asked prettier. a German or Canadian shepherd. Go on, go with Anna. Go on. Sorry? Um, the gaming ferret mum has asked German or Canadian shepherd. Oh, um, I'm not actually sure. He's a rescue. And I think he's mostly German shepherd. But I thought he was entirely German shepherd. But I've met a number of people recently who reckon there's a bit of Malamute in him. So I think he may be one of the more recent hybrids um, that people have been breeding 
yeah. where they combine German Shepherds, Huskies and Malamutes into something that's bigger but more friendly because yeah. he's a very friendly dog and to the point that it's out of character for a German Shepherd how friendly he is towards strangers which is handy at the size of him yeah <laughs> but um but yeah so I think I think go on go with Nana go on go on go with Nana <laughs> Not always as directable as I'd like them to be. Hold on, just. Awesome. Anyway, sorry, you were saying, Andrew. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> quite but, yeah, so, so, um, but the important thing is um, we got him when he was six. And he was a nutter, and now he's a very happy, relaxed, massive fluff bucket. So Aww. at some point, I'm going to do a DNA test and see what that comes back as, and that'll be interesting. Cool. Cool. Um, did anyone have any further questions for Frostwind, or are you happy for him to just point you in the direction of the village? Are there any... Um... noticeable characteristics that we should be looking out for that would distinguish Greymane from I don't know anything else from, that we might yeah come from across. from non rye wolves perhaps or or is there um, anything yeah. in the personality he, that we he, need to he nods and just says she is a young lean wolf of about average size with shaggy grey fur and pale blue eyes. I'm afraid it's it's difficult for me to say what you two legs would look for in a wolf. As far as I'm concerned, all of us look very, very different. It's you people who look the same. <laughs> um, to be honest, what um, I'll be able to recognize Orion, I'll be able to communicate with her, telepath with yes. her telepathically. So I've also got a spell wolf... that allows me to communicate with animals telepathically. Right. So any any wolf we come or any animal indeed that we come across i can communicate with them if they are rye yeah. and we can yeah. establish and we can also ask them if they've seen gray mane which might help um one other thing you would know micah which you can disseminate to the party is what gray um what frostwind mentioned about thinking that gray mane was experiencing the Y bond yes if you would like to, um, you know, <laughs> part disseminate that on that for... know. <laughs> yes, since clearly I already know yes, all about yes. it. So you know deep down in your, from memories already there, that the Rye Bond is a soul deep state of almost invariably lifelong psychic connection between a Raiden and a trusted and beloved humanoid. The bond is often described as feeling not like forging a new tie, but instead reawakening to one which has always existed from the dim mists of time before time, or like finding the Yay. other half of one's own spirit. Wow. I love that. That sounds awesome. And Frostwind um, is, thinks that Greymane may have felt that connection with the human boy before which would explain why she went back and couldn't stay away yes very very means. much nice. what would that mean if that bond does connect she won't be able Greymane. to stay away and she'll I mean, be she in, if the villagers aren't friendly towards her they'll kill her because she won't be able to stay away uh, or the boy will have to leave with her and they'll think that she's taken him and they'll hunt they'll her down, hunt and, the, kill her, so. down and kill her yeah. Frostwind will um, note as well that it is a reciprocal partnership. The the urge that Greymane might, if if indeed they are rye bonded, the urge that she feels to be by his side will be reciprocated in kind by the boy. Mm. Uh, Hi, Dark Shadow. Welcome to the stream. Hi. You know, I nearly made that my name for this stream. Dark Shadow. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, if uh, like this is gonna sort of like furrow her brow and so look very seriously like this is this could become quite serious um 
in the tales of my people um, where we have a strong connection with horses um, the most memorable stories we have of the most gifted warriors bonding with rye horses if one of the partnership dies eventually the same fate befalls the other half of the partnership so it's these going to be wouldn't necessarily know that so we no. need to warn them. Yeah, yes. a bonded cannot survive without their bonded partner. Possibly. They'll only okay. be half a person. Very glad that so many of you understand the legends and knowledge of the Y partnership. He will admit that even he knows that people of Aldis generally know about the Y bond and understand it and even treasure it and admire it where it is seen. But again wolves in this part of the forest there's always been a little bit of friction because as much as they are sentient and awakened rye they still need to hunt game and eat as any other wolf would so that has led to tensions in the village before awesome all right at that point Karenza's going to be like okay i think we should i think we should we go should we yeah, hurry time to go what uh point the way frostwind frostwind will point to a pathway which diverges from the road which leads which he says leads towards the nearby village he says that he himself is not going to follow you out of fear that he could just by his very self escalate things okay that's perfectly understandable but he is very grateful to you all for hearing him out and really quite touched that you were willing to hear him out so readily and easily and to approach him without fear. Awesome. Karenza's mm. pretty much going to take the no fear route. And if Micah's still on her shoulder, she's going to literally just head straight down the path. Not awesome. even checking if Siska and Duretta's are coming too. <laughs> uh, I think Micah's, Micah's going to kind of turn around and go, are you coming? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think as uh, I think as as this girl goes past, she sort of like makes a a point of sort of like almost like so like trying to do a sort of bow on her horse as a sign of respect to to, to Frostwind. Um, as as she as she departs, um, she wants to show proper respect. Frostwind, where should we meet you again once we have discovery of your friend? Frostwind looks to you all and says, do not worry, I have exceptionally keen senses. I'll be able to keep tabs on you and return to aid you when it is safe for me to do so. Awesome. Okay, so you head along the path for a little shy of two hours before you see the trees of the forest thinning to give way to a farming village. We get a map. Do we get a map. Do we get a map. Nope. Yay! Nope. <laughs> we just no, get, to... get a picture. Okay. We get a fine. picture. Sorry, maps in because of the way that Blue Rose works. One of the things I've decided to do for maps is only really use them where combat matters because mm -hmm. there's so many places you can go right as part of it because it's supposed to be a more npc and sort of conversational route i was right. looking at some of the Fair way enough. the quests work and i was kind of like there's a good example is in one of the campaigns i thought of making as a starting campaign for you there's a long street and you can pretty much go to different people on the street every single house i was like i am not going to make a map for every single house and every <laughs> stairs enough. downstairs yeah. so i've there decided it Outside of combat, where it's really necessary, I've decided to go for old school role RPG, and we will use our imaginations. Oh, okay, theatre is <laughs> on. Um, and along the way to the village, you see signs which point it out to you as the village of Redbriar. Redbriar. And there's inviting smells of wood smoke that waft on the breeze as you approach. Awesome. Yeah, as we've been traveling, you would have seen um, Ziska go to go to a flask and like take like a really, really like long drink from a flask and then put it back. Okay, that's, that's all you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Andrew's just problem. continuing to bounce along excitedly. Sorry, <laughs> Andrew, interrupted you. That's okay. That's okay. No, I, I I've, I've, I've really got it in my head. Corenza is suddenly becoming very much like Pinkie Pie from My Little Pony in my head at the moment. I have Ooh. not seen it, so I have no idea what you're talking about. I haven't about. either, but it does sound appropriate. It does, it's very it? worth watching. The, the new My Little Pony, I, I've been watching it with my um, free, soon to be four year old, and it is very good, very funny. If you if you like things like Adventure Time and things, it's got a lot of that sort of nuance where even though it's for kids, there's a lot of moments which as an adult, you can just go, ah, that was fun. <laughs> and the storylines have actually got really good for it as well. Like, I was surprised how much a My Little Pony TV show could have actual engaging storylines and a very strong, actually, fantasy element to it. Like, you feel like you're at some points in a... Not a high fantasy at all. It's My Little Pony at the end of the day. It's all about love and friendship and humour. But there are episodes where you're like, you know what, that would be... If, if you just see... If you took away the ponies and just made that threat <laughs> something with Don't soldiers and warriors... ponies! It would be... It could be considered a legit <laughs> fantasy novel. Oh, OK. Cool. It's, I actually... I knew a guy at. a while back who actually wrote My Little Pony novels. Oh. That's so cool. He literally got paid to do oh, my, my little pony, pony novelizations yeah wow right. to be fair and i shouldn't be saying this when we're at the start of the blue rose campaign but there <laughs> is a shop in cardiff which is near to where i am and i know they do the my little pony rpg no way with wow. the rule book for it oh dude <laughs> and i don't want to admit that when we're starting on blue rose <laughs> <laughs> but I'm at the risk of getting too far into my little pony i'm going to tell you what's going on in red briar okay oh, <laughs> <laughs> As your party enters the village, locals are bustling about with the business of the coming autumn in preparation for the harshness of winter. Smokehouses are curing meat, grains are being milled into flour, and the delightful odours of fruits cooking into jams and preserves are omnipresent. Though there is clearly some pall of concern over them, the people offer greetings when you notice them. Mm. So... Okay. I'm probably How going to be quite gonna... enthusiastic. I'm just going to say, have any of you um, seen a, a, a rye wolf? We're, we're looking for a rye wolf. It, 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 it's a lot friendlier than it looks. I'm I'm just going to stick in a, a, a mental thing here. It's like, maybe don't use the word wolf so much, like a psychic talk. Because like, I, I can communicate psychically, can't I? Have you I? seen a rye? Yeah, you can communicate psychically. In, in fact, I should note that even though your raven can speak, it will be far more efficient and quick for you to communicate psychically most of the time. Because when you speak as a raven, even though that's an ability you have, you have to think that you've sort of got, it would be as an actual raven speak. So it'd be very croaky one word at a time. Whereas yeah. when you use your psychic communication, that's when you're able to flow babble. majestically in, and babble and do all of that. So let's just yeah. assume for the most part, I'm, I'm talking psychically then. So I'm going to say just, um, yeah, let, let, let's not talk too loudly about wolves okay. or indeed rye at this point. Um, I believe what my yeah. excited friend is trying to say is, is there any news this day? We are new <laughs> people to this town and we wish to hear more of what is sparkling and new. Well, yeah. the young man with a bag of flour on his back who's seen you he has heard Corenza immediately talk about rye wolves, because she did. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it, it, the sage council of Michael will have to be advice in the bag for next time. But um, <laughs> he gives an uncomfortable look and sort of looks back around as if he's looking for someone in particular. And when no one appears or at least he doesn't see whatever he's looking for he looks back at you and says you've been dealing with the wolves what what do you know have they have they got marcus do you know what happened to him no no okay i'm <laughs> i'm gonna at this point i'm gonna say carenza stop talking okay at which point i will shut up <laughs> <laughs> We are but weary travellers. We have heard things on the winds. 
and the leaves that fall in the fall and dead of winter. And these things have shown us pathways which we wish to investigate. Therefore, we do not know an answer to your question. We merely inquire as to what we might do about it. The young village boy scratches his head and goes, you what? How can we and help? So I'm, I'm going to talk to him psychically and say, what's new around here, boy? Um, well, you, you must, you're a as well. Are, are you, with the wolves, you must know about Marcus if they've sent you here. Marcus Uranto, do they have him? It's important. The village does want to know what has happened to him. We, we, we get it. We, we don't mean the wolves any harm. If they've got, if they've got him, we, we, we just want him back, okay? At this point, I'm going to say very quiet to myself, bollocks, bust him. We believe so, that... Sorry, go, boy, on, go on. The boy is likely in no danger. He is safe. We do, however, wish to communicate so that all parties can be at peace. He looks around again and sort of winces a little and goes, you're not going to get much peace when it comes to the boy's father, Jaitos. He, mm. if, if he is hanging out, he doesn't even want to believe that he's hanging out with those wry creatures. He's convinced that something's happened to him. He says his son's being kidnapped by thieves or brigands or by the wry and killed. He does not want to believe that Marcus has gone out of his own free will. The rest of us, I mean... We're not always that keen on the wolves, but we know how it goes. We know what happens, and we, we respect that. We respect we. Well, I don't. Have I there, hope it hasn't happened to him. Have there ever been any rye bonds in this area? No, no, nothing like that around here. And honestly, we don't even know for certain if the boy is bonded with that wolf. He was looking out listlessly over the forest for a while, but we didn't see the other one. And well, the thing is, if I'm being honest with you, what I think happened to Marcus, I think he's just up and left. His father, he's he's not well liked around here. Uh, he's a bit of a harsh man, always tries to keep Marcus at home, always very Concerned with him not talking to people or making friends. Jars only, you know, he is. Uh, Putting this current current at that point is probably gonna pipe up. I, I I can understand how that would be not fun. Um yeah. putting aside maybe the we casual try and find racism. Marcus? Yeah. Where was he last mm. seen? He shrugs his shoulders and says, I don't know much about that. All I know is that the local hunters and foresters have been out searching for him, but to no avail. And sadly, we're a small village and winter's setting in, so we've got to be getting ready for the coming season. So mm. honestly, most of us have just decided that the boy had enough of his old man and looked to cut mm. loose and find mm. his own way in the world. And I say good mm. luck to him. Um, would uh, would Jatos have a specific reason for not wanting wanting to have his son acknowledged as linked with a rye? Come on, he's a Jarzoni. The Jarzoni hate all things to do with that. Anything at all arcane or magic. He turns his nose up the moment any of us so much as psychically wink at each other. It's just their way. So set in their way, so stoic. Yeah, yeah, I can kind of vouch for that. Yeah. Can you anyway. point us the way to where he might currently be, that we might speak with him? I mean, Jatos, you just need to listen for where the shouting's coming from. He's just been going round the last few days. Prenz is going to put her hand and be like, listening for shouting. <laughs> he's gonna take that completely literally <laughs> he'll probably be around the, he'll probably be around the village square about now talking to the head woman 
Her name's Lenya, by the way. She'll give you a proper greeting if you're looking to stay for a while. Goodness knows we could always use travellers and their stories brightening up the half fires at night. Cool. Okay. Thank and you. You have been most courteous, polite, and informative. We wish you many blessings on your continued days. Thank you. Good luck to you and your speech impediment, sir. I hope you get through it. <coughs> this guy it laughs, but Josh to disguise it as a cough. <coughs> Friends is going to lean over to kind of slightly closer to Mike and be like, speech impediment? He, he, he has a speech impediment? And I'm going to psychically say to her, probably depends where you're coming from. Don't worry about it, love. It's really not important. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just listen for the shouting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If it, uh, I'm, I'm presuming I'm uh, still, uh, well, I, well, perhaps if we're in a settlement, I would have got down from Charlotte, but I'm probably going to be looking about to see where the direction of the village. I've decided that it might be safer for me to actually fly at this point because if Jatos hates Rye, mm. um, it's probably a bad he's probably going to be able to recognize me yeah. somehow okay. yeah. yeah and i can talk psychically so i'm going to take off and go up to about a hundred a couple hundred feet so i can look down and kind of scan the village mm -hmm. and see if i can see where jatos is because of course i can still communicate psychically with the guys can't i so if i uh yeah i'm just going to do a quick check of to whether there's a range on that yeah i was just going to ask about that. It just suddenly occurred to me that it, mm. it feels like something where even if it doesn't have a maximum range, it feels like something I might put one in on just so mm. that you can't yeah. talk to people across the continent. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was thinking you have to be able kind to see of them. line of sight kind of thing. Yeah. Ah, psychic contact is, it's all about the toughness test. So most of the time, I'm not making you take tests on psychic contact at the moment because I'm assuming that everyone in the party oh. is willing to talk to you. Yeah. But good point. When you make psychic contact, say you um met with Jatos and he didn't want to talk to you as you imagine he wouldn't, he could try and resist your psychic contact, and right. that would impose a toughness test. But there is a bit on here as well about sort of how distance comes into it. So if you can't see the person you are trying to communicate with directly. And I'd say, even at your height, even though you might see them far down below, I'd say that's still very far out. So I would make you make a test mm -hmm. for that. But, you know, you're a raven at the end of the day. I'd, 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 perf I'd be perfectly happy for you to, say, perch on the top of the houses, look around and still be within sight yeah. distance there. But I'm, I just don't want you miles up in the air I wasn't going to go. I wasn't going to go miles up. No, I was thinking yeah. kind of hundred feet or so at most. I reckon it would work from. Yeah. Area. Okay. And as long as you saw perch on a um, rooftop to carry on your psychic communication as it goes, I'll yeah. be happy with that. <sighs> okay. So cool. yeah. So that's fine. So we'll start with you then with that. So as you make your way up into the air, huh? you are able to get a full layout of the village, and you find the village square is not too far distant from where you are. It's actually quite a small village and you do see what looks like a gathering near the central building the central hall where there do seem to be two people engaged obviously at your height you can't really tell but it does look like a quarrel from the way that hands are shaking and moving okay so i'm gonna um dip down again and kind of Cross the street in front of the people and, and fly up to land on um on a the top of whatever their building is near nearest mm -hmm. and say keep going guys I think there's something happening in the square right ahead of you. I will head to the square. Yeah. Um, so. Bye, gaming ferret mum. Bye. Oh, Thank bye. you for joining us. Bye. Mm -hmm. So as you head towards the square, you do begin to hear quite a ruckus. In particular, you hear one man's voice over all others, and you soon catch sight of 
him. He is a somewhat gaunt older man in dour Jarzoni style garb, walking with a very stout cane. He strides and barks commands and criticisms. And the recipient of his frustration and anger is a plump, wholesome faced woman of early middling years who seems to be doing her best to keep the conversation productive, though it seems this is a somewhat futile endeavor. The grim looking man is shaking his heavy cane in the face of a woman you take to be the head woman. The man's face is a mask of barely contained rage as he practically snarls. My boy has been taken, only Leonif knows by whom or why, and you tell me to be calm? The head woman answers him, Jatos, as I've said I know not how many times now, we don't know why Marcus has disappeared, and we need to explore all the options. I feel for you, truly I do, and I want Marcus home safe and sound, but I just don't know how to make that happen. Everyone who is able to go looking for him has been doing so, and is doing so, and no one has turned up any trace of him. Her expression is one of profoundest compassion for this man, waving his walking stick menacingly in her face. Are you absolutely certain that he doesn't have anyone or anyone where else to whom he might run? Bah! Jato scoffs. This again? I've already told you my son would not leave me, not even if his own life was at stake. He's a good boy, a loyal, obedient boy, as a child should be to his father. Besides, we have no other surviving family anywhere, and neither does he know anyone outside of this village. Okay, so I'd, I've dropped down and flown over the um, village square, and I'm now probably up on the on the roof of the church or something, because I know if this guy sees me, all hell is going to break loose. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm staying out of sight. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably go up and be like, uh, we might be able to help. We could greetings. maybe try and find him. Jatos narrows his eyes at all of you who he sees, and his his lips curl into a skull, uh, scowl. Who in the name of the light all of you? Do you have something to do with my son's disappearance? Are you the bandits who have taken him? I told you it was a kidnapping. They are here to take the money from our purses so that they can sell him back to us. Well, tell us what you want for him. Tell us what you Good want. Good sir, we have no desire of your money. We are merely travelers who have come this way and have heard of your struggles. And while this is happening, I have a thing on my I'm, sheet. I'm saying kind of very quietly, psychically into this group's head, saying I, I wouldn't say no to some money. You know, I'm, I'm trying to build up a hoard, you know, I, and I don't have any at the moment. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm really, a, you know, I'm, I'm bootstrapping or, you know, claw strapping, maybe. Helen strapping, perhaps, but you know, if if there's a coin going at some point, I'll I'll you know I'll I'll go I'll give it a home, you know, just uh just if it's lonely, yeah, you know, yeah. just you gotta start a hoard somewhere. I'm just gonna panic at the anger and go invisible. <laughs> and I'm gonna um right you before you go invisible, there's Sorry, several things Ryan. to go. Let, let's finish. Let's finish um. <laughs> Goretti's thing. Goretti's first, okay. and then I was, we'll I was going to, to utilize the um, uh, psychic talent of calm. Right, that okay. Does, really psychic, <laughs> does the psychic um, thing of calm say you have to be in psychic contact with them? It says you must be in psychic contact with the subject. An unwilling subject makes a resistance test against your test result. A subject under the effects of calm is free of intense emotion and incapable of aggression or violent action for as long as you right. concentrate. Yeah, so before you can do that, we'll do this one at a time, just so, um, because it's just one of those things. Because you need to be in psychic contact, you need to make mm -hmm. psychic contact with him first Okay. before you can do that. So it's going to be, do that first, and then if that succeeds, then you can use calm. So because he's an unwilling participant mm -hmm. for your psychic contact, because he doesn't know you, and doesn't want to psychically contact you, you need to roll for it, and then he's going to make an opposed roll to see if he can keep you out of his head, essentially. Uh, okay, so is that just the cast spell die? Is that what I do for psychic um, contact? Yes, yes, cast a spell.
Oh, beautiful. You have got stunts. Ah ha ha. This is one of the things I love about the age system is unlike D&D where you just on a natural 20 get damage, you get stunts so regularly in this game. And once you know them, all the things you can do with them are so fun. I love stunts. Stunts are good. <laughs> so let us go. And because you're doing an arcane spell, let's look at your uh, how many stunt points you have first before we go. Four. Four. Four stunt points. And you've got so far a total of 12 to your roll. So let's go into the arcane stunts, shall we? Ooh, let's. Okay. So things that you could use here, which could help you, I'll rather than make you even more powerful channeling might be useful here. You could mm -hmm. just one at a time put all of your stunt points into it and it raises your test results. So at the moment you're on 12. If you want to make sure that you beat, because you know he's going to do an opposed test against you, you could put all four of your stunt points into that roll to make it a 16, which is going to be much harder for him to Ooh. resist. That could be right. good for you. Um, you don't get any fatigue from psychic contact so the second one doesn't matter you're not doing damage to him so mighty arcana doesn't matter lasting arcana isn't necessary arcane shield isn't fast casting isn't imposing isn't split arcana. yeah i think your best bet at the moment is to just use powerful channeling to put all of your stunt points into your role to make it better so that when he makes his opposed test he's less likely to beat you and keep you out of his head uh, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's go ahead and use my stunt points for that. Okay, so that actually becomes five in your case, because I believe as well under your, if you could just confirm this to me, under your talents, you have a racial talent as a Vata, which gives you bonuses to using that particular. Where would we find that? Um, if you it's... go into powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I have yeah. arcane channeling. Yeah. Uh, your potential, your arcane potential makes it easier for you to command greater power using skillful channeling arcane stunt for one SP instead of two and treat powerful channeling arcane stunt as if you've spent plus one stunt point on it. Yeah, so, so I, basically I get a plus one of, for it. Yeah, so you have five stunt points there to put to it, so you've got 17 for him to be. So he's, he's going to have to roll three sixes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he fails to keep you out of your his head you are now psychically connected to him and now you can try to use calm awesome so i should note for those of you who are very used to D, &D um blue rose doesn't have a limit on the number of spells you can cast a day but more powerful spells can fatigue you and make you weaker so certain spells you don't want to be casting so often oh and we've had a roll let's see what did we get Ten. 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 Uh, no stunt die off that. So let's just quickly check calm because I believe it is opposed as well. Hi, GSD Media. Hi, John. How are you doing? GSD? Does that sound for German Shepherd Dog? <laughs> <laughs> My automatic thought when banana. GSD comes up. Oh, we've got your so snack. It's... Hmm? Banana. <laughs> banana, 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 I have banana, love hearts. Banana, 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 banana. Oh. I don't have you... any snacks at all. I've got water no. and that's it. You were very close. You were very close. But Jatos is becalmed. Oh, he is calm. Okay. Almost. Oh. You very nearly wasn't. Um, <laughs> literally one, one die roll number out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, so, I almost kept one of my stunt points so I could carry it over and get two for it. Oh, you can't carry stunt points over between... Oh, between rolls? Yeah, no, no. Okay. Stunt, stunt points don't um, stack. Accumulate, right. Yeah. When gotcha. you get stunt okay. points, you have to use them for what you're using from for... there and then. Um, okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, so he sort of blinks a little and sort of rubs his head and he's like... I'm sorry, my boy, he's 
he's missing and he's all I have here. He's the only family I know and I need to know that he's safe from those filthy creatures and from bandits and brigands and these people, they're not doing anything to help me. And... Good sir, we completely understand. That is why we are here. We are people who can help. And I believe this kind and generous lady has been trying to reassure you of that very fact that we will not rest until you have an answer. The head woman at this point um, moves around Jatos as he's sort of in a semi daze of calm. And she looks at you, particularly you, Doretus, with a smile and says, my apologies, travellers. You are under no suspicion of any wrongdoing here. I'm Lenya, head woman of Redbriar. Our village is in the midst of unhappy times, as you've overheard, but um, you are here to help us. You seem to already know a lot about what is going on here. I am merely a civil servant who is in the uh, uh, business of diplomacy. Therefore, I saw a need, and we together have, have chosen to come and do what we can. We didn't send out any messages to neighboring towns for the sovereign's finest to come and help us in this. You, where did no, you hear about We merely this traveled from? through and we heard we, we heard rumor. As I'm we gonna send out. a psychic question to ask, can anyone ask where the boy was last seen? If you can give us some information as to where the boy was last seen, we would be more than happy to uh, commence with our own investigations. She looks at you and there's a little bit of uncertainty on her face at the moment. She's clearly not sold on where you have all come from, the village is very much out of the way and not an important stop off point for travelers, but she doesn't say anything more on the matter as to why you've come just yet, but you can sense from her furrowed brow that she thinks something is amiss, but she shakes her head and begins to tell you what she knows as you requested. No one saw what happened to Marcus. We've been trying to track him, but the local hunters aren't skilled enough to follow the signs left on dry ground by a light-footed youth. We've been searching for miles in every direction save one, and we've turned up no signs of him. Well, which, which direction didn't you go? Surely if you're, if you're searching for someone, you go in every direction. She glances towards the mountain range of the Icebinder Mountains that lie to the east. Why can I never remember north, east, south, and west? I, have to do... I literally, whenever I have to do anything to do with compass directions, I have to in my head just, which way is it? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, she um, looks to the east where the ice bind the mountains most definitely are, and several others look with her, and you can see that there's a sort of a bit of a shudder in, yeah, and they go, no one goes in that direction. That's where the well, that's where the outpost is. Outpost? Outpost. She nods and says, well, you remember not so many years ago when our lands were close to invading, to invasion by the last of the Lich Kings and our fair queen destroyed the last vestiges of power in Kern and gave us peace. The Lich King was planning to invade Aldis at that point before she dealt with him once and for all. And there were outposts, staging posts for his invasion, which were set up up there. During the war, actually, Alden soldiers occupied the forts for a time and used it as staging posts to make counterattacks into Kern once the Lich King had been dealt with and we were just dealing with his remnants. But well, you know what it is with dark fiends and with dark magic and kern. We just stay away from there. It was built by the Lich King, and there's a foul sense about that place. Um, just to tell me things that clearly I already know as Rye, um, would I have a 
problem with dark magic or with legends of fiends um, or whatever? You would certainly have a problem with it. Everyone in everyone in Aldia has problems with um dark magic and right. the dark creatures which can come out of it mm. because I mean, maybe not so much you, because as a why you are awakened into the world, but everyone else knows of the long tyranny that existed in the times of the Lich Kings. Which so there's were... a kind of race memory for everyone else about the yeah. impact of it, but I would Yeah, there, there's a very big memory of the times it. when the Lich Kings were in charge mm -hmm. and experimenting on different races to make things like right. the Night People and the Vata Shah, who aren't Darkspawn, but they did make several monstrous entities and creatures which still haunt the world today and people can still come across artifacts that the lich kings made during their time of power which turn people either into maniacal murderers sometimes into monsters right it's, so it's not a dangerous good. place to go yeah mm. it's a dangerous place to go but she does and admit that everywhere. marcus does know of the legends of them and does know that the place exists. I'm also thinking, you see, um, that if he is bonded to a rye, um, he wouldn't necessarily be as bothered about going that way if it meant getting away from his dad and being yeah. able to be freely bonded to his rye. Mm. Especially yeah. if the rye wouldn't be as bothered by the stories as the humans are. Yeah. It might actually and be the, only the place safer they have direction. Looked. Well, mm. yeah, that, that does sound to me like mm. an idea. I mm. will look at Lenia and say, might there be any sort of um, creatures we might find in the woods between here and there? Like, I, if we are to travel that direction, I would like to know what we might run across. I mean... Good At this time of right. year, most animals are settling down for the winter hibernation. There might be mm -hmm. the occasional wolves out there, of course. You might find mm -hmm. bigger creatures like bear, elk, but the ice binder mountains, you never know what will come down from there. But essentially nothing more than the usual, usual. animal game. As long as you can handle yourself with a hungry wolf. I believe we are so well equipped. And Lenya, the more she looks at the Icebinder Mountains, she looks very uncomfortable, but she does admit it is the only way we haven't checked. I, I feel bad saying this, but we've taken to believing that Marcus must have just taken off to leave his father for good. And but we but I guess suppose we really should check out that way. But I don't want to risk my people. We're not fighters. We are. Um, at this point, sort of like Visca, um, will step forward and say, um, uh, "Fear not, Lenya. Uh, I'm built for a task such as this. If there is, if there is a t if there is danger afoot, then I am not afraid to meet it head on." Uh, and go and uh, find out what has happened to Marcus. Awesome. Carenza is not going to look particularly happy about this being scary, but equally she'll be like, she said she'd help, so she said she'd help. And Micah's going to say, excellent adventure, about time, been waiting for this. Things are finally getting interesting. And then Carenza's going to look to Doretus because he managed to calm the scary guy down. He'll be like, you coming? You coming? Please say you're coming. <laughs> we will make no assumptions as to the reasonings of young minds, but I assure you, your trust is well-founded in us. We shall undertake this task. Yay! GSD Media has asked about the bit pool. Oh, you the bit pool. you explain the bit pool? Yes, the bit pool. You can give bits, um, cheer us on with bits, and then it goes into the bit pool. Um, which we're probably on zero because it's a brand new stream. And then the bit pool can be used to spend on items that we can use. But I haven't actually made a blue rose specific set of items. We need to do that, Andrew. 
we actually have 101 in the bit pool. Do we have 101 in the bit pool? Wow, okay. nice. That's confusing. I didn't think we've it got any. Must be as a carried over from carried over from the setup. Well, last week when we were doing our our setup stream, uh, I bet somebody I think somebody threw some bits down. Oh yeah. yes, Most yes, of I the think setup they did. Stream. Great. Well, in that what case, I'll say yes. What I'll say for now, Ben, because um, the blue rose doesn't have as many just sort of items as D and D, and that's one of the things which is supposed to make it. I think I said last week, but it's supposed to be more streamlined and yeah. easier to help people in. So rather than having a million different versions of swords, they just have, say, a light blade, and it's up to you to decide if it's a rapier, a short sword, a okay. cavalry saber, etc. So I think for now, what I'd say the bit pool would be best to go into is conviction points. Okay. Maybe. But yeah. I'll... Yep. I'll, I'll think about what else it can go to as well. Yeah, we'll set that like up so a... that it can be spent for next stream. What it could be spent on. But it's basically a pool of bits that you guys can vote on. Viewers can vote on to decide to help the party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone totally saved our asses with healing potions. And holy water. Holy water. Holy water. That Sarah was it. Right. Yeah. Tariel in a in a in another yeah. one so yeah you can totally say you can basically it. help save the party and help the party out with something they really need in the yeah. middle of combat and in the middle of tricky situations with the bit ball but it yeah. requires you guys cheering us on with bits to fill it up oh <laughs> thank you this is hey. Yay. We have bits? Hey, we just got you. given 100 bits thank you yeah. we're up to 201 Yay. Yay. anyway i think we should go so micah is gonna take off from the church route and fly ahead grumbling to himself about nothing wrong with young minds. Young minds are still perfectly formed, thank you very much. I've been so insulted in my life. No, I said that we shouldn't ever make assumptions about young minds. And it you was in did. your tone. There was a tone. There was a subtext. <laughs> I may be a raven, but I can hear subtext. Thank you very much. Mm. Well, as you two are psychically arguing with each other, Doretis <laughs> is going to have his attention pulled away because others who were listening to the whole favor and are interested in you guys are suddenly very excited and gladdened by the good news that finally real adventurers are going to help them find Marcus, who they're all very worried for. So as soon as they find this, loads of people are suddenly jostling you, coming round, patting you on the back. You have offers of being given a lot of food. People go into their houses to get you provisions, jams, breads, all sorts of Ooh, things. Jam. They get you, because they know that it is coming on winter time. they get you thicker bed rolls for you. Mm. Or you, you get a sense mm. that even though J-Toast might be quite prickly, the rest of the town and village is very, very they care about Marcus. friendly. And they are more than happy to give you anything you need and mm. in terms of food quite a bit more <laughs> okay. awesome i'm gonna quite happily munch on whatever i get handed first mm. just start munching on it quite happily um, I'm, I'm gonna fly down and grab a piece out of your hand because okay i will hold i will yeah. hold some bread up or something <laughs> <laughs> whatever i think a raven will eat <laughs> and i will try and make sure that we only take moderately okay um so that we are not just taking in excess because mm. obviously these villagers are giving of uh the little they have mm. and winter is coming. i'm gonna whisper to perenza in her head um thank you very much for the bread maybe stick a spot of jam on it next time just just for quality control you i'll know. immediately do that wouldn't, wouldn't want you to get jam on the bread and hold that up <laughs> <laughs> and i'll make sure that we have uh some feed for the horse that will be something i look out for yeah, Doretta. Um, as you, uh, you know, you carry on. So, sort of like, you know, like as he goes to do it, as he kind of goes to to get get the food, food for the horse, and I'm sort of like, I'm sort of going to be slightly pleased, but I'm going to sort of look and say, oh. yeah, and I'm going to say, do you think I can't take care of my own horse? I was going to say. I was actually <laughs> going to offer the uh, the feed to Ziska, and just say. We must provide for all. True. I could have got that myself. I am used to taking care of this horse. Do you know I helped deliver this horse when she was born? 
That's I'm used fantastic. to taking care of this roof. I have no doubts as to your abilities to care for this horse. Mm, Though I I'm know gonna I'm gonna stop time, talking now. <laughs> we shall all fade to ash and dust. For now, this time, I do believe you are the most well-equipped to handle and care for this creature. I merely but offer some small, small bit of aid and sustenance to aid you in this way. Until we I'm gonna I'm eyes. gonna fly down and grab does does he have hair? Does Doretus have hair? Yes. For Doretus to decide. I'm, I'm gonna he doesn't I'm, he's not gonna have it for much longer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna fly down and grab a little bit of hair right at the nape of his neck and just yank it out as I fly past. <laughs> Is there such a thing as inspiration? Can we offer inspiration <laughs> from the chat? Is that what you meant by conviction? Um, oh, that's conviction, yes, isn't but, it? Yeah, basically. you can give more conviction that way. I'm okay. hoping everyone can chat keep can it. give conviction. Conviction. Yay, can thank give you. Conviction. Or you can still call it inspiration and we'll know you yeah. mean conviction. Yeah. Yes, we, 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 can use we know what you mean. Yeah. I think we should probably actually take an interval if we're going yeah. to take an interval. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, before we take an interval. There was, yeah, GM was trying to... Yeah, before we take an interval, let's... There's just a few more things I just want to quickly do in this place. Oh. So let's mm -hmm. get you to the point where you're ushering out of the village. Uh -huh. okay. some, then Great. we'll take an interval if that's okay. Yep. Yeah. So, um, Duretis, between you being unfortunately attacked by a very ill-mannered bird, as far as the villagers <gasps> see, as far as the villagers see, they do not know what's wrong with this bird. They do not know that it is a lie. Do not get offended Natural with Natural justice, gem. people. Do not get offended with a GM, it's just what they see. They do not know you are awry. All they've seen is a raven coming down out of the sky and plucking hairs. But anyway, one old huntsman oh, comes to you and says, if you're going out that way, I should suggest that you stop off at Galfi's cabin. She'll see you good for the night. I thank you. Um... Is there a particular path we should follow to find that? Is there a, a marker that we should look for? Well, unfortunately, the paths up that way, I believe we said already that we don't go in that direction. The paths are pretty mm -hmm. overgrown. In fact, if you don't mind my saying, it might be pretty dangerous for you to set your horse that way. In quite a few places, the paths will be so overgrown with briars and Pickets that you probably won't be able to get your steed through. But Galfi, she lives about a half day's walk out from here. So that would be your best place for a stop off for the night. And who knows, if Marcus did go that way, maybe she would have seen something or might even be giving him shelter. Hmm. Thank you for this information. Mm. Can we have to leave the horse behind? I I'm just going to mention it to Ziska and uh, say and take your life in your concern, hand. although you are the best uh, to make such decision uh, but the thick overgrowth uh, may be an obstacle and I have no wish to part you from your from your horse I just wish for you to have a fully realized understanding of what it is we face is this is this horse planning I'm sort, of, I'm sort of like you know gonna I'm sort of like not gonna as this girl isn't gonna respond to it away. she's gonna sort of like you know uh, get an overall impression of his entire manner like you know how authentic does he actually seem or is he actually talking about him right now because if he is <laughs> you're yeah, talking what, about Doretus now or Doretus um, yeah, yeah, sure okay. so yeah trying try to explain this to, to me like about that Chala can't come um, so I'm just trying to figure out how often and whether he's actually talking down to me or whether he's actually trying to be sincere because in these parts it's I would be tamping um, if I feel that he's talking down to me um, so I'm gonna sort of like you know go around and sort of like you know I'm gonna nod I'm gonna go around to Chara and kind of sort of like kind of stroke a nose and say like I know you don't like this and I don't like it either, but I'm not going to be able to forgive myself if if some, if I if I lead you into a place where you, uh, where I can't look after you as I want to. Um, I'm going to make sure that somebody looks after you, 
um, and I will be back for you as soon as I can. And I'm sorry that I'm having to do this to you um, sooner. Uh, I know that I haven't seen you in a long time before we began on this journey. I'm sorry I'm having to go away for a bit again, but um, yeah, uh, I'll make sure that someone looks after you and I'll make sure they give you a, a snack every now and again. Not too many snacks, but I'll make sure they give you the snacks that you like if they have it. Okay, you got, you got that? Yeah, go, 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 go. Lenya will pull out a handkerchief if she's got one and offer it to her. I was going to say, Ray <laughs> <laughs> just can't pull out a handkerchief and, and, and just wave it. Offer it to Ziska. And I'm going to sort of like, I'm going to sort of look at it in a sort of puzzling look and say, what am I meant to do with this? Because this isn't something that resin people would. Would like you and I'm going to mutter to Liska, you're leaking, you're leaking. Oh, well, I didn't, I don't think I was actually crying. I was sort of like, I was trying to sort of hold it together. But I'm sort of At which point, Karenza will probably just tuck it away again and look like she's yeah, done something a, wrong. So like, it's a, like a, <laughs> or I might do like the Shrek thing and kind of be like, <laughs> like okay. my, my face is like, it's like, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and um, then I'm going to sort of like uh, inquire if they have um a stables that can um of lenya if there's a stables that yeah well lenya um one thing which i didn't really get into before with her which i probably should have on character the description but she has distinctive braided hair and the um darker skin which you know and associate with your own people oh she okay. might not be you cannot tell just straight away just by looking at her like you can't tell if she's full resian it obviously looks like she's very deep rooted in this village to be its mm. leader but there is a sense of resian blood in her and as she comes over to you she, she has a look of utmost sympathy of what's happening with your horse she also has a look of confusion as well it's like you you are resian you yes uh no mixed parentage <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry a a sea folk resin is not something that's very well heard of i didn't mean to cause any offense but i could tell just by your bond with your steed that you must have been from the old country believe me i understand what it is to give up a horse but i'm afraid denrick is right the ways that way are no good for horses you'll start hitting the frostbinder mountains and the going will be very steep the paths are completely overgrown but i promise you i haven't i've only been to resia a couple of times in my life but i do understand what it is to look after horses and my husbands and i and my wife we can help look after your horse we will keep it for you and we will treat it with the utmost respect a proud resian mount would expect i uh Siska really appreciates um like the to have such someone who understands the significance of um of the the, the companionship i have with with, with charla um and i'm gonna sort of like um whisper to you like she is an absolute tyrant for snacks I promised her that you you will give her some, but please do not overfeed her because she will turn to an absolute fiend. Lenia smirks at you and says, oh, don't worry. My wife, Samari, she is an absolute sucker for giving snacks. And we are always having our pantry looted from to give sweets to the young children. I'm sure she'll be just the same giving a salt lick and the best hay we have over to your fine steed. and. I must say she probably deserves quite a treat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for your consideration. With that, you are well provisioned to set off on your way. So maybe now is a good time for a break. Awesome. <laughs> Let's go to the interval. Or a back to the quest. We have a quest. We have a heading. And it is interval time. So if anyone would like to go take that interval, take a break. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna gonna get yeah. <laughs> can I have snacks? Uh, you'd have to get your own. I have love hearts. Oh, I can do the, I can do the inappropriate thing. Love hearts have messages on them. Mm. I'm gonna open the packet. I don't know if they have them in the US. Are they? In, um, do they have candy? Say, do they have like little love messages on them? Yeah. 
But are they like things that little kids would eat? Yeah. So this one. Yeah, they can get it close enough, and it says no. You can't see it. You can't see it. It's funny. It, it keeps disappearing. Mine. It says you're mine. Oh. Yeah, we get those, but usually only around Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. You can get them when you're around here. And then little kids tend to give those out. They're, they've got the same active ingredient as antacids for indigestion. So when I was pregnant and I had indigestion, I was basically just used to eat loads of love hearts. Oh, because they're nice. significantly cheaper. I bet. Mm -hmm. And taste nicer, too. But also, yeah. I have them on my tables at Comic Cons because then people come over and pick one out and then tell me what it says. And I propose to three people because some of them say marry me on them. You know, nice. How'd that work out for you? It was funny. Yeah. And rather inappropriate. Some of them also say kiss me. Some of them say, yeah, they're just really inappropriate. But it's funny because it breaks the ice at a Comic Con. Well, that's a great idea. That's a great way to use it. Equilibrium. Equilibrium? I think GSD Media was talking about it. <laughs> yeah, Bear has just said I asked about three men to kiss me when I offered them love hearts because <laughs> Bear does the Comic Cons with me. Yeah. We've asked some people some interesting things accidentally with love hearts. Nice. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Anyway, should we be talking about stuff? Is there anything we can tell people? Uh, What's going on? Well, I'm doing a play reading next week. Awesome. On Tuesday. Tuesday. Sadly, it'll be super late night for you guys in the UK, but for an American folk uh i think it's 7 30 central question mark we're doing Coriolan coriolanus okay shakespeare mm -hmm. and i will be playing tullus uh aquafina that's not that's not the name that's me being funny um oh look at that look at that somebody just somebody just posted it um tullus a fetus, a fetus, okay. which is kind of the bad guy. Ooh, you're playing Ooh. the villain. Kind of, kind of the, the villain. So yeah, that'll be Tuesday night. Uh, I want to say seven thirty. Which would be one thirty Wednesday morning UK time. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be fun. So if any of you are, you know, insomniacs and in the UK and feel like staying awake till, uh, you know, 3, 3 a.m. your time, um, then you could hear me voicing a character. Uh, and if you're in the States, that's a much more reasonable time. So that'll be 8.30 East Coast? 8.30 East Coast, 7.30 Central, which is where I am. And 5.30 West Coast. Oh, yeah, groups. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is one of those really fun groups that the way that they cast this particular show was once they had the number of actors they were looking for, they were they they needed twenty five actors. They put everyone's name into a random, like a random name generator, and it just randomly spit out parts for people. So there's no casting by, um any sort of uh, type or stereotype. Men play women, old play young, young play old. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just give people a chance to play around with a part and it's Shakespeare. So it, it's it's challenging and it's fun. And, and, and a lot of people take different um, approaches to, you know, uh, interpreting a character in some, some way or another. And putting on little pieces of costume or, or collecting props and like a lot of people like you guys have like you have that super cool background and i never yep. do I don't, I don't like to do the background but some of the people in this do like awesome backgrounds that they change every scene um cool so there's just a lot of a lot of different fun things that you don't always get in 
Shakespeare traditionally, but uh, and the work over Zoom as well. Yeah, yeah, and it's over Zoom. So um, there's a Facebook event link somewhere? Question mark. Um, if you can find yeah. it, if you can find it, send it to me. I'll put it in chat. Oh, bear. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone's up for it, but we could do the feeding of the floof. Oh yes, feed the floof. Pull feed the floof. The floof. <laughs> we can feed the floof. I can't see the chat, but I don't know if uh, if the normal people that love Wolf to song. see the floof. Wolf song gets very excited about the floofs. That's what I was thinking, I, I, but I don't I know. I get if she's quite excited that. about the floofs too. I get excited about the floofs. To be fair. <laughs> Floof okay. time, yeah. Bear's just got a floof yeah. time. <laughs> okay, right. Hold on, just a moment. So I don't know that they have the event up yet. Okay, sure. we can always mention it again on Monday's stream. Yeah. There's the floof. <laughs> no floof. Yeah, I'll make sure that you have it and we'll put it in the Discord. Cool. Gently. Oh, good boy. Oh, the joke is going to be so loud. Okay, right. This is the entire supply, okay? We're not just going to have these on a conveyor belt for the rest of the night. Yay, Wilson's noticed. Floof! Hey, Wilson, this is for you. <laughs> Actually, no, it's for him, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, Good boy, look at your great big ears. <gasps> look at your great big ears. Gently. Good boy. Good, gently. Good boy. Gently. Good boy. This is something else I had to teach him how to take <laughs> a treat gently. Oh, your fur, that is good. Boy. Good boy. Okay. Last one. Last one. Good boy. There. Who's a good boy? Yes, I know you can see the bag there, but I'm not giving you any more. No, no more. No more yummies for Jakey Baby. Not this evening, anyway. Oh, did Mummy not give you enough yummies? <laughs> Barra said, can I give inspiration to the floof? He's such a good boy. <laughs> He's such a good boy. Well, song has said, such a sweet papa deserves all the treats. The pet, yes. Yeah, yes. unfortunately, we treats. went to the vet this morning and got weighed, and for, somehow we've managed to gain weight, even oh, though yeah. our food was reduced. So, mum is a bit confused about how that happened. Yeah, we've realised there's no more treats coming, so... Well, <laughs> off you go. <laughs> that was the feeding of the floof. Feeding of the floof. <laughs> Like feeding of the five thousand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I was gonna, is it? Could it be? Could this be like, um, you know, is it in American football shows when they have like the halftime show? This so like feeding. It basically feeding is the actually. It's the yeah. Show. It, it is. It's the halftime show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anne Marie is on a, our stream. We have food feeding. <laughs> yeah. Because he's a good boy, and every it makes people happy to see him, and it makes him happy to get yummies, and because he doesn't really like it when I come in here in the evenings. He's used to um, me and my mum being in the living room and watching TV in the evening. So when I come in here, he gets a bit What's upset. He doesn't like the pack being separated. Oh, so she's bless. in her office right now. Normally she's in the living room, but we're still, we're both in separate rooms and he doesn't really mm. like it. So the reason I started this was actually to give him something positive about the experience of me being like a, you know something to associate even though I'm not in the same room mm. at least there's a positive association with it and positive reinforcement has just been the central thing to rehabilitating him so mm. it's just all part of that really <clears throat> um, but yeah but everyone everyone loves seeing him as well and I'm always happy to share the floof joy so you know <laughs> yay Sorry, just taking a handful of painkillers because I've got a headache trying to come up. That's okay. And now for the lining my stomach phase. <laughs> Probably should have done that first, but oh well. Awesome. 
I being mean, a raven, I you. can eat and fly at the same time, and because I speak psychically, I can actually talk at the same time. So huh. three things at once. Yeah. Go you. That is a pattern. Right. Are we ready to carry on? Yeah, I'm ready? happy if everyone else is. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's so... do it. Ah, there's the Brian we know. There's the enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian has been very quiet today. It is very yeah, quiet. I'm, I'm trying it's... a whole new tactic today. I'm trying <laughs> um, um, subdued and understated. Yeah, it's just and weird. Apparently wordy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Verbose is the mm. very Un understated, but with lots and lots of words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Overstated understatement or understatement, understated overstation? <laughs> something something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I use all the pretty words in the in the language. You do all mm -hmm. the pretty words. Most impressed with all the words. Jessica is not impressed with all the words. <laughs> Karenza is. Karenza is fairly impressed, though she's still confused about the whole speech impediment thing. To be fair, <laughs> Karenza does seem quite easily impressed. Yeah. This could get us into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for our egos then. Okay. Shall I continue? Yes, please. Okay, so you make your trek according to the directions given to you by Lenya and by the old huntsman. And by the time you reach the cottage, night is falling, but you spot the pinpoints of light up ahead that grow into the flickering, ruddy glow of firelight through little windows. As you draw near, the rickety front door opens and a grey-haired night person steps out in well-worn and patched up old clothing of heavy cloth and sturdy leather, winching a crossbow and slotting a bolt. She wears a stout <laughs> hatchet at one hip and a long knife at the other. What are you lot doing here? she asks. Yet her tone lacks any sense of threat. Rather, she seems simply to be taking the necessary precautions of a life lived alone in the wilderness. You lost or something? Um, no, we come as friends. This uh, was suggested to us as a waypoint. We come from Redbriar, and we come seeking a lost young lad. His name's Marcus. We were told. Marcus, yes. And we were told that we might be able to find uh, a place to rest for the night and that you might you, know where he is. may be able to give us any insight as to whether or not he's passed. Galfi seems to hum and haw a bit at this and then lowers her, she lowers her crossbow pretty much immediately, but she seems to sort of struggle to find her words at first, almost like she might have spent months without speaking to any other living person but eventually she gives a sort of mm -hmm. nod and waves you all to come inside to her of her little cabin okay that include me missus she um looks up and accepts your psychic communication and just gives a sort of uh. Brazil. i fly down through the doorway yeah, and as soon as you set into her little abode, you see that she lives a very humble and quiet existence. There's not much in the way of furnishings, and those that are there have been worn down the years. The seat cushions have lost all their fluff and bounce, and the wood of her other furnishings are very worn down from constant use. She immediately goes to put on a kettle for you and seems, if not happy to have visitors, seems to decide that you are worth paying good attention to you and putters about getting out old chipped earthenware cups. Mm -hmm. And she also puts down some slightly stale cakes for you and slices them up and looks to you all expectantly. Yay. I'm right in there. Yay! Yeah, cake. Yep. Yeah, I quite happily eat the cake too. 
uh, I make sure like I kind of make a point of making eye contact with her and saying thank you very much for your hospitality um because I imagine she's uh she's perhaps not used to people being happy to see her and be around her so I want to make the effort to know that you know I've seen her and I appreciate what she's doing do you want nothing she says with a shrug and she continues to go around you um I mean what, what, what would you like to do um, if um, has uh, she seen a boy go yeah. by with a yeah. with or without ask her about Marcus? Like, yeah. have, you, have, have you seen Marcus? And, and have you seen Marcus? I'll remember not to say wolf. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of sit back. I'm not eating the cake, um, although I am kind of playing with it with my fork. Um, <laughs> and I'm gonna sit back and kind of observe and watch more than anything. okay. Uh, Galfi will um, look to answer the question and gives a nod as she she's ambling about for quite a while trying to make sure that she has things down for you but only seems to be able to provide the stale cake. She looks in a few cupboards and seems a bit sort of <sighs> put out every time she's looking for more things to put on the table and eventually she seems to settle that the cake, the cake is enough and sits down with you with her own nettle tea and says... I saw a boy pass through here just yesterday. Um, was traveling with a wolf, a wild companion, I thought. Yeah, that would be him. I think that's him. Yeah. Well, I saw um, them pass by. Could you tell us the coloration of the wolf's fur? Uh, well, it was a bit getting on dark when they passed by, but kind of gray, had piercing blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And which way did they go, lady? Continued on toward the mountains. I I didn't think nothing of it. I thought the boy must have been, he looked about the right age for a new hunter, taking his first strides, taking his first mission out alone at night. Or he must have come from the village. And with a white wolf by his side, well, he's in good company, so nothing for me to worry about. Excellent cake, lady. Is it? Is yes. it? Thank it's you. Very, very good. Thank you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna whisper to Ziska. You see, I can do manners as well. And I'm going to sort of like nod to to, to acknowledge, acknowledge what my crew said. I'm very excited about my ability to learn. Oh, I feel okay. like it's noteworthy. Yes. <laughs> Um, Galfi will look outside as you're talking and she'll, she has a very stoic look on her face and says, you're not going to find anything out there tonight. The best that you can hope to do is get lost and all that. I take it you'll be wanting beds? Uh, yes, please. I don't like getting lost. I I've done that enough already in the last little while. To be fair, lady, I just need somewhere to set my claws and stick my head under my wings, so I don't need a bed. You, you, you could sleep near me. Well, that would be nice and cosy. Uh, would you like any help uh, making preparations? Galfi looks around and says, Not much to do, really. You can go over there and get some blankets out there and put them on the floor by there and there. I'll make sure the tea's going on. You there, you can go outside and bring the wood in. We'll need a bigger fire tonight. We have guests. Um, and he's point, she's pointing at you, Doretis, at that one. Okay. To go out and get the firewood. Um, uh, are other people coming to stay? Because you've said that we have guests, or are you referring to us? <laughs> you, of course. No one comes out here. Just us nutters. Just us. <laughs> I'll go ahead and just go outside and uh, hmm. grab firewood. But I'm also going to just kind of like take a look around to see if I see any 
um, any trace of uh, footprints or the wolf prints. I know that it's been a day, but just a cursory glance to see if there's anything in particular that I'm going to see out there while I grab the firewood. Um, yeah, you can take a perception for that. Uh, well, whoever else was saying something will. Yeah, get I was just going to ask. Um, I noticed that I have a thing for recognizing traces of arcana. Do Rye count as arcana? Would I be able to uh, use that? I mean, you have that ability. It Rye themselves are not arcane, so you're not just right. you're not just magical in and of not yourself. Not leaving but... traces of magic where we go, kind of thing. Yeah, but assuming, I mean, you know, Greymane to to talk with. Marcus will be using psychic contact a lot. So in that kind of way, yes, you should be able to use that to try and detect them along the way if they're close enough and if you're on the right trail. But also if they go through long periods of not talking, then that could throw you off, etc. Okay. Um Karenza's gonna basically just start doing things like tidying up and washing up like she's Great. kind of instinctively Come on. her role is to tidy up after everyone else Come here. but she doesn't uh, look very mm. happy about it mm. yeah okay galfi is pleased with that do you want to take a perception test of your own as you're mucking in with all of this i can do that perception. and I got 13. Okay. No stunts. No stunts. Yeah. And would you also... Um... Ah. Am I... Directors? No, no, no. Ziska, would you, like, would you like to make a um, same perception test? Because you're getting the blankets, aren't you? Yes, I am. Oh, no. What have you done, laptop? Oh, hang on. <laughs> Sorry, it seems to have decided to close down my roll 20, which is very, oh, no. <laughs> very okay. rude. Hang on. Well, Brian, you were trying to do one in the meantime. Do you want to do your perception test while we yeah, wait? Yeah, um, what would I click Go on? Right, click on the word perception on the character sheet in the skills. The word... Oh, there it is. <laughs> 12. Okay, so... Dresses, it's quite dark outside now, so there's not much to see, and you're not a track or anything by profession. About the best that you can see are tracks that are yours leading to the cabin from your own journey earlier that day, but there's nothing at all that you see that is untoward okay. in any way. Um, Ziska, let's do you, because you have got a stunt point on a abysmal roll. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be uh, my habit with, with these dice. Let, let's, <laughs> let's see what we can do with that. So yours okay. would be an exploration stunt. An exploration stunt. And I believe you only have one. Yeah, advantageous positioning. Yeah, so that's the only one you can have. So okay. you that's make fine. your discovery from an advantageous position of your choice up to two yards away from a place that would normally lead to your discovery. So basically, you you work this out before you're even at the thing, assuming you work out anything. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, your role did not help you very much with your stunt die. <laughs> no. But Carenza, you, as you're going around and helping and putting things away, you realise that Galfi, she's given you her rather stale cake and looking at the provisions she has and with the winter chill blowing in through the walls of the place, you feel like she's probably giving quite a bit more than she should, given her position as a hermit living alone and the time of year. Clearly this cake, and there's a stale piece of it still left by Doretis, which he refused to eat, and you can only imagine how that might make Galfi feel after offering it up. But you get a sense that this woman doesn't have much in her life at the moment not much um to mm. give and she's clearly giving you all she can have i got like a bunch of extra food from what the villagers gave us 
you do. I um, The villagers were very, very happy with you. And even after Duretis said that you didn't need much, they still couldn't help themselves in giving all they could to your endeavor. So you do Can have... I try and sort of sneak some of that into the cupboards? Um, I mean, you can try and sneak it in, yeah. Uh, I, I don't actually care if I'm very sneaky. I just, I'm just i going to try and not do it too obviously, but this is me, so this is probably going to be fairly obvious. Okay, okay. Um, you, could, you could ask me to be sneaky, because I am actually quite sneaky. Just, she doesn't, yeah. Maybe I mean, in the, in the bond between me and Micah, I'll be like, she doesn't seem to have much food, can we give her some of ours? That's a good idea. Have I got anything that will help with that? <laughs> You're now looking at my spells. I think I've got sneaky sneakiness. Yeah, I, I never thought I'd say this, but the raven is the best option to um, distribute food around the house without anyone noticing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Only in this that. world. <laughs> I've, got, <laughs> I've got thievery, but I reckon I can reverse it to be yes, good at Yes, yes, you'd be able back. to reverse this. And also, you have a stunning dexterity for your level. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I will suggest that the raven does it then. Deposit yes. some of the food. Okay, and I quite happily offer up loads of my food. Would you like to make a... At this point, there's nothing really locked in the place, so you'll... Fevery Arcana at this point doesn't really matter too much, but I will say that it can give a bonus here. So would you like to make a plus... Well, your plus should be added to it anyway. Make a dexterity check and we'll see how the dice rolls and if it gives the plus... It should just give the plus five automatically. Oh, I got stun points. You do have stun points. And, and it did you the plus five. Yeah, you I did, did get, do get, get the plus five as well. So you've got 13 and you've got two stun points. So... Thank God, because it was a pretty crappy roll. <laughs> yeah, but that would also count as a roleplay stunt in this instance. Right. So let's go to roleplay stunts. And how many did you have? Two. 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 And another thing, sway the crowd, passionate inspiration, bon mot. I would, I would say that I would let you use and another thing where you manage to weave a second thrust of conversation into the primary interaction just to keep Galfi busy and talking while she looks Stracted. out the window just sort of, you, yeah. you just sort of yeah. use your conversation to sort of get a show oh if you get those but uh, you know what you can tell her that you want a bed after all you want a small pile of rags or something to sit in and while she's mm. getting those together you can use so, that to aid your role a bit more okay so lady lady galfi um i i don't i don't like to be a pain but i was just wondering would, could I, you know, the, the, everyone's got a bed and I've never actually slept in a bed. Have you got like some kind of, you know, Thanks laundry laundry or something? It, it's going to get, yeah, I, I'd like to make a little nest. That that would be quite nice. The last the last time I made a nest, well, I, I was I was making it to, to be with this, this other raven and it, it didn't work out so well. So I kind of didn't get to have my own nest. And um, yeah, w w would, would that be possible? So... Can do. What's mine is yours. And um, with that, she goes straight over to the pile of her own bed sheets and starts tearing off strips from the end of her bed sheets to make you a little circular nest, which she winds around some pillow moss, which she has and makes you a little bed What's from that. What's that out the window, is... Lady Galfi? What's that out the window? <laughs> that appears to be the not very hungry man looking at the floor. Mm -hmm. But oh, he's, 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 a, he's a dreadful depressed man. That's how the nest going. So I'm going to sneak around and while she chats and and start kind of stuffing food into various random yeah. corners. You're you're going to be able to get it in, and she's not really she doesn't have much in the way of social graces, so she has mm. no idea what's really mm. going on here and answers all your questions honestly. Every time you tell her to turn and look at something, she will turn and look mm. at it and then scratch near her mm. jutting jaw tooth and. Just carry on like that until everything is in Corinne its place. Is basically, assuming Corenza notices <laughs> this happening, it's going to suddenly just bounce more and more excitedly. Like, it's and then I'm going to fly working. over to Corenza and, and and land on her head and say, if you don't, don't stop bouncing, you're going to give the game away. And if you give the game away, I'm going to poop on your head. 
Galfie's going to look at Corenza as she's bouncing and go, Outhouse is out there. Outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, would I get my advantageous uh, position whilst Galfie is, has her back turned in whatever it is I have apparently noticed? <laughs> um, no, you, you didn't really notice anything, unfortunately, okay. with that role. Some, Sometimes when you just have a bad enough roll, the stunt die don't really... A oh, stunt die doesn't make anything a success just because oh, you have stunts. Okay, fair use. Just so, uh, wanted to check. Yeah. <laughs> so you notice that you're in a building. Yeah. I'm in a building putting some blankets on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's about the gist yeah. of it. So anyway, eventually I'm assuming Duretis comes back. Yes. Okay, good. I'll collect With my wood. firewood uh, and uh, go uh, in. Sorry. With my wood in hand. So that was more like Brian. Yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> sli we're slipping back into characters we know and love. <laughs> Feels more natural now. Um, Galfie will make sure the fire is roaring hot for you, her guests, and then once she's satisfied and being the kind of woman who's very used to routines in her day. She goes straight over to the pile of rags on the floor near the fire and lays herself down to rest and points for you, Ziska, and Carenza to take her bed while Doretis should try and lay out on the chairs if possible. Uh, um, Carenza's yeah, not entirely that. happy about that. <laughs> Yeah. Um. I'm so yeah. I'm sort of like gonna feel like I like just we'll, we'll go go across the say like in, um um in with my people we show great respect to to those whose years are longer than ours. Um. This is your home, and we want to do our best to respect it. Please do not feel you have to put yourself out for for our benefit. You've already done a lot for us ain't nothing if you're really bothered about it give me a pillow lady oh. galfie lady galfie i've i've would 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 you would you be able to help me with with a new experience i'm i'm not long awakened you see and um i've never i've never actually but and this 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 might sound wrong because i know humans have funny thoughts about this kind of thing but I've never actually snuggled up with an elder before in in a nice bed. And would would you be up for would you be would you be willing to help me with this new experience? Um oh, up in a bed together. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Galfie is going to bristle a bit about at that and she has had many, many years living by herself in this outpost, and she sort of looks uncomfortably back at you and just says sorry no like to keep my space and then i'm gonna say psychically to the others okay guys i tried all right i really tried <laughs> okay. is gonna be very much like like to be like no no, no. you have bed so we don't need the bed we, we, we're young we can sleep on the floor and then it's literally just gonna sit down on the floor <clears throat> i'm just gonna sit in the chair and lean back <laughs> Galfie will eventually go to, if you just sit down on the floor and try to outstubborn her, she will eventually decide that mm -hmm. it's not worth um, giving up a her bed. So she will take her spot in the bed next to Ziska, because there is enough room for two there. And the night will pass. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Karen yeah, will cuddle up with a blanket. My nest is and super offer, comfy. I, I, I will probably try and cuddle up near the nest, rather than being completely alone. <laughs> yeah, about <laughs> half... About after once um once Ziska is asleep, I'm yeah. gonna pick up my nest and and hop over to Carenza and snuggle up next to her. Oh well, uh, what's what what Ziska is actually planning on doing was sort of uh, you know perhaps uh, just keeping keeping watch because obviously that you were out in the middle of nowhere. But if uh, we're approaching somewhere dangerous, um she I can imagine she wouldn't feel entirely comfortable about just presuming it was all going to be fine. Um, so she might just stay up a little bit longer, um, just to kind of like keep a watch on proceedings. <laughs> and like, that is an inspiration for all. 
Thank you. Thanks, Thank Dave. you. Not the back conviction thing. <laughs> Yeah. That's conviction, we, yeah. We, we um, yeah, conviction yeah you can give yourself conviction. We really should look Ooh. at conviction points at some point. I will, I will get a bow to that when it becomes important, because um, you already have four of them. I've got five now. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think after sort of an amount of time, if nothing appeared um, appears amiss, then no. Uh, yeah, nothing this. will. Galfie's lived here for years, and nothing's troubling her. She's still close enough to the village that, and far enough away from the Ice Binder Mountains that she's not in any real danger here so eventually you can go to sleep happy and you will all wake in the morning to find that Galfie is continuing her very reluctance not the word but she seems very sure of what she needs to do to be a good host and you found that she's dug out some more of what she has to offer and she's cooking more than she should of wild boar sausages with thick slices very thick slices of slightly stale bread but served with butter and jam toasting on the fire and she seems to have clued in that new food has appeared in her larders she doesn't mm -hmm. say anything to you about it when you wake but she definitely offers some of it there but it's clear that she's taken the message and kept what you've given her awesome mm. well at least she's not like 1000% stubborn, only like 990%. Yeah. So yeah. there's something. Yeah. But anyway, you have wild boar sausages for breakfast and thick okay. slices of bread and butter. Yay. I am so happy right now. Like, you know, I can't yeah. eat massive amounts, but I'm sitting on Carenza's, um, I've, I've eaten and now I'm sitting on Carenza's shoulder, kind of leaning against her neck or her head, actually, because Ravens are pretty big. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And just, you yeah. know, gradually entering a food coma. I'll just reach up and slowly strike some feathers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if there's like, so like any more of that net, if you, if you, if, if the, if they're just, uh, not just, I'm just going to, if Galfrey's offering like more of that nettle tea, you will see uh, Ziska drinking quite a few cups of it. And she's yeah, you're going to need it as a digestive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Galfie will offer you as much water as you need. There is a stream nearby, so she tells you that it's... I mean, she says it's about all things that you ask her for, but she says it's no trouble topping you up, and she keeps giving you more water as you need it. Yeah, you see Jessica just pulling out flask. After yeah. flask, after flask, after flask. <laughs> However, you're again, still... She offers, she offers no explanation as to why she has so many. <laughs> Yeah, you're still up very early, Bo, and it's still only just dawn rise when she says, if you're continuing after those two, you should probably be on your way soon. Translation, bog off. Yeah. <laughs> Karenza will totally get the hint and be like, Say okay. to Micah, boy, you sure eat like a bird. I've been practicing. Great. Sometimes I go and eat eyeballs from the dead lambs. Yes. I'm assuming then that the rest of us in that one. <laughs> I mean, probably true. She is still a raven. I'm um, still a raven after all. Entrails so are particularly tasty. Yeah, right. I, and, then I, and then I'll say that's so raven. That's so yes. raven. <laughs> there we go. Got in. Awesome. Karenza will be quite keen to go, I think, and not bother mm. this woman anymore. Yeah. Galfie, however, before you, before she permits you to leave, I should say, she um, goes to a cupboard near her bed and takes out what looks like four very small jars and just, without any care as to personal possessions or anything, she just throws your own bags open and... Um, jams these jars inside and just looks at you all and says good ointments for treating injuries they'll help you thank you thanks lady. for the food many thanks to you no idea what you're talking about what food your food <laughs> is delicious Carenza will just kind of blush like before we <laughs> depart is there anything that we can do for you to repay the kindness I was about to ask that yeah <laughs> Well, you've given me the food already. Don't suppose you had any more blankets on you, did you? I will hand over the blanket that I am carrying. I will hand over mine too. 
Do rye feathers have any particular value? <laughs> no, there's nothing intrinsically magical about your body. You're still a raven. She could make a quill, but there's no guarantee. I was about, I was about to say, do you ever, do you ever have, do you have any use for, for, for a quill, Lady Galfi? I don't know. I'd make better use of your feathers, fletching a couple of arrows for my bow. Then take them, please. And let let me. I'll uh, so I'll pull out three feathers, and uh, and hand them to her. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Safe travels to you. For what it's worth, I hope you find the boy and that wolf. So do we. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hop up onto um. Actually, I'm gonna say to Karenza, can you just crouch down and hold your hand out? I, I crouch down and hold my hand out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna hop onto her hands and I'm gonna say, put me on your shoulder. Without those feathers, I'm I don't really trust myself in the air for a bit. Okay, guys. Hand to shoulder. Yeah. And then I'm and then I'm gonna say to everyone else, I'm just gonna be like, I, I ate so much at breakfast. We noticed. Friends is just gonna grin. A bird's gotta keep their strength up. <laughs> and okay. then Karenza's gonna oh, leave, but on the yeah. way out, she's gonna realize she's forgotten her bag and then has to go back and grab her bag. <laughs> uh. Okay, so you leave Galfi with plenty of food and warm blankets to last her the winter, and someone, whoever wants to add it to their list of stuff, is currently holding four vials of Galfi's salves. I don't think I actually have a bag. Uh, you yes. do not, and no. you wouldn't be able to physically carry. That's what I was things. thinking. So where would I put that if Let I would? I would. Just... put it in his. Yeah. Um, on his character sheet, I would suggest you put it in because this one is slightly different. Um, I would put it maybe in your persona yeah there's there's plenty of space under relationships goals honorifics titles i'll just put it in character notes yeah. okay so for how do you spell galfi uh g-a-l-t-h-i-s oh. and one thing i'd also encourage you all to do as well because this is a much more sort of npcs can re-crop up at other times if you ever want to sort of make notes of who you're meeting because you might come across them again not necessarily in this mission and campaign but you could see them again down the line and your actions do have consequences with these people cool which is in my relationship notes yep yeah. and as for galfie's salves if you're making notes brian um so one dose of salve grants a plus two bonus to a healing test. Oh, awesome. So basically, yeah. when you're doing a healing check, if you're using the salve, you have better healing. Okay. And then how, how many... Uh... Four. Four of them. Right. What I was going to say is, how is a dose one pot, Single one pot. whole pot? Oh no, no, no. Sorry, there's four doses per pot, and you've got four pots. So sixteen doses of cool. nice. Yeah. Sounds like we might need it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. I have that down. Okay, so. You continue on, and as you're going, you can tell you're, you must be reaching the point where hunters and even Galfi no longer go out. The path before you is becoming very overrun and tangled as you go. It still broadens out in a few places where old trails and old roadways still hold sway, but it's pretty obvious that you're the first people to have been around here in some time. The wind among the trees is growing persistently louder and more forceful, and a winter chill is hitting you harder now as you approach the ice binder mountains. Tell me, how are you traveling? Are you going 
this is always a leading question when a GM does this. Are you going around talking and having a good time and not paying much attention to your surroundings? <laughs> I think we've probably got a bit more serious, though Carenza is probably still a bit not paying that much attention and talking Micah to Micah, but is, probably in, um, in our heads. Micah is, is paying attention because um, he didn't actually eat that much at breakfast. Um and he can't currently fly uh, so well. Well, he probably can, but not mm. terribly well because of the feathers. So um, he does not like being forcibly earthbound, so he is definitely paying attention. Yeah, Dorenza Which doesn't stop him that. talking to Carenza and everyone because, you know, he's good at multitasking like that. It's Okey quite Zisca's default mode to be paying attention. Okay, those of you who feel like you're paying me. attention... <laughs> Those of you who feel like you're paying attention, can you make perception tests? And if you have any focuses that help in searching, seeing, or sensing things in any way, you can add a plus two bonus to your role if you have a focus that does that. Yeah, I do. So um... I have something that is a uh, second sight. That will help see if there's any uh, oh, wow. attempted psychic contact or any signature left behind by our camera. Wow. wow. Amory, you just got yeah. a perception. <laughs> you got three five. Triple threat there. Wow. Yeah. And Ooh. I get to, I think I get to add two to that because I have the searching focus. So that's uh, actually Yes, yeah, searching you will get a plus two bonus to that. That's your focus. So that's so. twenty yeah. with five stump points. Nice. Cool. That makes me feel better about my earlier horrific role, which was <laughs> saved by my high dexterity modifier, but even so. Cool. Well, let's go into that role then, shall we? So you have got five stunt points, so let's see what those are first. And oh, yes. this would count as an exploration stunt. So for exploration stunts, you can go right away to the end, so... If your discoveries lead to combat within a moment or two, you receive a plus three bonus on your initiative. Is that... I don't know if you're about to make us fight something, but it kind of sounds like you Are might. you in exploration stunts? Yes. yes. Which one is that? That's yeah. right. Uh, oh, the, the upper uh, hand. The upper hand. Yeah, yes, the upper hand. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to tell you if you're coming into combat with something, but... I'm, I'm not going to tell you what you've seen. Well, actually, yeah, no, I can actually. Yeah, that would be the order that you'd do it. You'd have the thing, and you. Yeah, I'm just going to say it's that way. So, before you spend your stunt points, you do get a sense that something is nearby. Right. A I'll bad give you something a or a good something? A. Basically, something, what you can something. sort of hear and see is a big sort of lumbering form on the path ahead and a sort of uh, noise is that a bad guy kind of noise because it sounds kind of like a bad bear guy kind of, kind of noise mm -hmm. hmm. would um is this a rye thing because i would um, know that you have it's too far away for you to have any way of knowing immediately how much what you still have um two more stunt points so if you take efficient oh, yeah. search as well or do you only have one more no you have the upper no, hand which is four more. yeah oh one more yeah yeah you only have one more so you can't do efficient search as well um i'm just going to say that no you can tell it's not a y right just straight out but what you do know is that it is a bear it's a bear. On the path ahead. Right. Um, it does not sound happy. At this time of year... Oh, Lord. Have I just put you guys onto a map with no map? Where the yes. Heck's the map? No, the map's, the map's there. Oh, good. Yeah, the map's there. No, and, just... and the bear's there okay. as well. Actually. It was just taking its time to load. That's good. Whew. Oh, my raven looks so pretty. 
I'm glad you like it. I, tried I have to choose. No, idea, no idea which one of those tokens is me, but the raven looks so pretty. I have to admit, at least I know which one is me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It took me a while to work out how to name the characters. I guess I didn't backtrack it through. So the one with the, and I'll need to change this at some point because you, oh no, you do have a shield. So the one with the shield at the front, that is you, Ziska. Uh -huh. uh, the blonde with arm outstretched is you, Karenza. Okay. The grey-haired man at the back with staff out sideways is Duretis, and the most beautiful bird in <laughs> all of the land is Micah. Awesome. I knew I liked you. I can't move my token. Uh, I, I'm going yeah, to I... say that this is not my fault. I asked someone else to deal with this earlier, I thought. <laughs> Can I move your token? Okay. Even a... I can't move your token. That's interesting. <laughs> oh, I bet I know where it is. I know where it is. It is my fault. It is all my fault. You are on the map layer. You should be on the token okay. layer. Okay. Let's move you to different layers. <laughs> I move all 20. You always embarrass me. Even when I think I've got it right. Can you move it now? No. Do I have to refresh first? No, it should, it should automatically. Uh, are you seeing me move them? Yes. I'm, you yes. can now move them. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Oh, I still can't move now. Okay, I'm going to take you off, and then I'm going to put you back on, because I think I asked Bear earlier to play about with the character thing, so I probably just okay, wasn't yeah, doing it right. Bear has just said, ask Andrew to import the characters in again. So Yeah, so I'll just delete tokens. what's there. Yeah, so you all suffer momentary displacement from reality, which is very harrowing, <laughs> and you all agree never to talk about it again with each other, because... <laughs> It is just so bizarre and weird, and you get the sense that other people in another world are somehow controlling your thoughts and actions. Yay, ah, boy, we've got names and everything. Yes, before. I can move myself. Yay! Not that it's a great existence. All right, you. It's not much of oh, a Oh, and the bear is also on the map, player. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Bear, onto the token layer where you can be moved. And let's also give you a name. Barry McBearface? Hold on. Truthful Butt Humperdinck? Yeah, I was going to say Bear. Ha Haddington. Bear doesn't need to put his bear anything on the map. Yeah. There we go. Bear with me. <laughs> the dinch. <laughs> After all the kerfuffle I've been doing with Roll20, I feel that is an appropriate name. Absolutely. It's yeah. perfect. Mm. Right, so you have what looks like, I mean, I'm assuming, Micah, you tell everyone else about this and you don't leave them to gleefully just wander into... No, sure, guys, bear ahead, um, sounds upset, I think we may have a problem. Very... A very furry problem. Mm. Okay, and because of you being alerted in advance, the bear doesn't have the drop on you, and if it comes to combat, Micah, you've got the first um, round because of what you chose as your stunts, and you see a large brown bear that rears up on her hind legs with a roar before dropping back down on all fours and approaching with aggressive snorts and grunts. Yeah, that's that's definitely not a happy bear. Can we dodge? Um, the tree Please? growth is a bit too thick around here for okay. you to make a effective getaway through mm. the trees. Okay. Um, I I feel bad, but about thinking about attacks. But is this bear definitely attacking us? Um, it's. Coming towards you, and the more time you spend thinking about things, the closer it's going to get. But Can I it's... use my psychic contact to talk into the mind of an animal? Uh, yours is animism, isn't it? Am animism, yes. Yes, if you have animism for it, then that means yours, your psychic contact is specifically for animals. Not Rai, because Rai are conscious, but you can yep. communicate with animals and at least sort of it's not quite the same kind of communication, like you don't have a chat with them, 
but you can feel their emotions and try and get a read of what's going on. Okay. So you can definitely try and do that. Can I do that then? Do I click the cast spell? Um, yeah, yeah, it will be opposed, but... <laughs> I got six, but I get to get two <laughs> stun points. <laughs> I don't think you're going to beat... Well, you've got six. Yeah, you're not going to beat an 11 on that. No. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> I shouldn't have laughed. Okay, so I don't succeed. Um, let me just check the way you rolled that as well, just a sec, just to make sure that things are going through. Oh yeah, your perception has been added. Oh no, no. Oh yeah, your spell casting ability has the been both, added. The, the best I can do is add two anyway, which still get me only eight, which would mean I'd still yeah. fail. Yeah, and okay. your arcane thing isn't going to matter on that. You can't get up to the target okay. number, so no, you have no Nothing immediate read of it. And he's going to come a bit closer still, still very sort of lumbering. You can have, I mean, it depends what you're going to do next, but I'll allow you one more go at it. I'm thinking mm. I could go for its eyes using my pinpoint attack. Mm. Mm. I think... Okay. I think Ziska is instinctively going to have, oh, she saw this bear approach, or when uh, Micah mentioned there was a bear, she would have instinctively got her, her shield and her pole arm out um, as a defensive mecha, uh, uh, well, a defensive approach um, and perhaps encourage people to, you know, <laughs> go back and not be ahead. I have sleep as an arcana, and it says creature, um, but I have to do a psychic contact with the subject, but my psychic contact only says person. Yeah, your psychic contact is only with person, so unless you took psychic contact again with the animism thing, you can't be in psychic I contact can't... with the bear. Okay, you you so can't, can't read it. You can't feel your way through its mind the same as... You do a person to manipulate it, it in that sleep. way. Okay, okay. I just wanted to check. Um, so... Can I? Yeah, Micah? Uh, no. No, I was just going to check my psychic contact, but it's also the mind of a person. Yeah. Can I try again, then? Uh, yeah, you can make one more try, as no one's actually attacked. So you can make one more try. <laughs> I got nine. But well, I do get five stunt five points. Five stunt that points? Time. That's pretty good. Yeah, can everyone hear me still, by the way? Because I've had to change up my um, speakers. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, I changed mic. Cool. Okay, good. Um, it's going to be another opposed test by the bear. And you've got five stunt points, and I tell you what, you're going to need them. Okay. <laughs> I, would, I would suggest that there is one Arcana stunt... Because I know that you're already fate. I should probably shouldn't be telling you this, but you, there's one specific Arcana stunt you're going to be want to be using to make sure you beat this bear. Okay. Uh, are you in arcane stunts? Yeah. So I'm going to suggest you take the same one Brian did before, powerful I channeling. Powerful where you channeling. And the outcome. Okay, I think that takes it up to six because I've also got the same thing that adds an extra one. Yeah, so what total does that give you now? Um, that would give me 15. You have beaten the bear and you have got into its mind. Yay! And goodness knows you needed that stunt point then because without that stunt point you wouldn't have got in. Wow. So um, that was good yeah. work. <laughs> so That's I, I would try and me. calm it down being and way too friendly a DM go around it. <laughs> so with um, animism what you're going to get is more of a feel of the bear you're not going to be able to talk with it as such but you it you get the sense it's contact between your mind and the mind of an animal yeah yeah, so but like, it's not the same as a conversation what doesn't want what it's scared of that kind of okay. thing yeah you, you get more just impressions because you're not sort of Okay. You're not having an actual conversation. The bear doesn't have, even in its own head, it doesn't have a language per okay. se. Jake, 
take it in. We're trying to fight a bear or not fight a bear. So what you okay. get from the bear is a sense of the cold encroaching. It's getting to the point where it should be hibernating. It's cold, it's hungry, and it's just desperate for more food to fatten up to get through the winter. And you get a sense that there is a some kind of other wounded animal nearby that you have disturbed it from going after. Going after, as in it's hungry? Yes. Is, ooh, is it possible to get an impression of what the other wounded animal is? For instance, um, is it a wolf? It's not or a boy? To be. It's not likely to be, it's likely to be a small. It could be a boy. You, you, you'd get the sense that it's a, because the bear doesn't really know what it is. Bears don't actually. It, it'll know if it's got two legs or four. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it know knows that it now. has four legs. It knows that it's not something that it's prey to itself, but then it's a bear. So I don't know if bears are prey to wolves anyway. It's really not something get it's slightly frightened of. They're yeah. both apex predators. Okay. Yeah. It's not, it's not Basically, the, the bear sees it as being four legged and food and in a wounded position and probably going to die. Okay, do we need to kind of get, just get out of the way then? I'm going to probably try and encourage everyone else to just get out of its way. I'm fine with that. It's, it's just trying to hunt. Just get out of its way. I'll take your lead on that if you're confident. Yep. Okay. Um, are oh, you... hang about. Hang about. Uh -huh. If we're nearby, can I do my thing where I try and sense if there's any arcana? Uh, yeah, you can do that as a thing while... Um... Just trying to make sure that we don't accidentally condemn the wolf and then the boy to death because we let a bear eat one of them. Yes, this is true. Second sight. Uh, cast spell? Yes, is that that's what why I, I clicked. Oh, that's not very good. Eight. But I got a stunt point. <laughs> Just the one. one. Stunt point. <laughs> one little baby stunt point. Um, can I detect any arcana? Uh, okay, so what you're going to be trying to look for is you're probably sensing psychic contact to make an opposed second sight test against the other adept psychic contact testers' reaction to know when someone's trying to secretly get into psychic contact with you. No, you Ooh, are... I'm trying to detect the signature left by... Yeah, so you're trying to read arcane signature, which is... You know what, we'll do this because we need to cover this. I don't feel like it's something you wanted to do, but it's something we need to cover with the rules anyway. So let's just do it. So you needed to hit a 13 as your target number to detect old arcane signatures in the area. And well, you... crap. Yeah. Yeah? You got a 13, did you? No. No, I did not. I got eight and a stun point. Even oh. if I do channeling, I'll only hit 10. Yeah, okay, so you get nothing from that, but what you need to do now, because this is a slightly draining thing, you need to take now a toughness 13 fatigue test because you used read arcane signature. If I haven't put mm. that in your rules, I'm sorry, but I, I'll make sure to do that later, brother. That's all right. How, how do, oh, right there, maybe that's it. Yep. Oh, I got a stump point. <laughs> But you failed the test. Oh. And you, I don't think you get stunt points on fatigue tests, unfortunately. You gave me one. Each fatiguing spell this encounter. Yeah, you got a stunt point, yeah. Um, but I don't know what it would, it would be arcana, so you'd only be able to, again, just add one to it, which would be five, but you need to reach 13 to pass. Oh. So, yeah, so unfortunately you have failed your test here, so I'll go over what that means for you now, and everyone with our car. I'm sitting, I'm sitting on Karenza's shoulder, kind of slumped and pouting insofar as a raven can, and feeling a bit sorry for myself. Yeah, so <laughs> this is what it says in the rule book about it. I'll just read it from the rule book. 
The use of some arcana is tiring, putting a strain on the adept's mind and body. When an adept uses a fatiguing arcana, make a fatigue resistance test. This is a willpower self-discipline test against a target number. This in the arcana's description, but they've got that on the thing for you to just use. So when you fail that, you take a level of fatigue, I believe. I'll just double check that that is right. Jake, I'm being very tired out over here. Can you stop whinging? I don't feel great about it either. Yes, come in here and give me some comfort thing, instead of complaining at me for being in the wrong place. My emotional support wolf has come to stop bitching at me from outside and actually give me some emotional support and get ear rubs in payment. There we go. Right, where is fatigue? So I'm just trying to find the rules for it. Where they are here somewhere. I know what you want. You want more treats, mm. don't you? Well, you can have ear rubs. You're getting too much for it anyway. I know. Mummy's it, it's like a, uh, Yeah, so you have got one level of fatigue at the moment, Micah, and fatigue for you at level one means that you now have a minus one penalty to all tests and cannot run or charge. Well, to be honest, that was I was kind of there anyway, wasn't I? <laughs> you were flying anyway. <laughs> Go on, bug off. That was a good boy. Anyway, to be honest, on that note, it is already very late. We should probably think about ending the stream. Do we want to finish this thing with the bear, or do we want to find out what happens with the bear? In two or Doretus wants to say something. No, I was going to say let's let's deal with the bear. Rawr. <laughs> Yeah, if we're going okay. to combat, that's going to take too long. Well, well, we decided to get out of the bear's way, we're didn't to get we? Out of bear's way. Yeah, no, no one's actually bear's moved way. yet, so the bear yeah, is. So still... I'm gonna, I'm gonna move back and away. I'm just gonna back and away. I'm on Karenza's shoulder, so wherever Karenza goes, I go. I'm gonna try and come to sort of to the side in the trees as well. Yeah, I'm gonna sort of back up, but I'm keeping my shield up, so. In case the bear decides to turn, we've got um, a bit of defense. That is something I was very much hoping you would say because now, Ziska, can you make a test for me? And we don't really have advantage in the system, but you do have <laughs> kind of advantage here. So, can you okay. make a strength check for me? All right, okay. Oh, <laughs> I am so like that. Th they are predisposed to disliking me. Well, don't okay. forget, I had a really great role earlier, and then the system totally brought my karma back on me with my horrific sight tests. So. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, <laughs> as the bear is wandering, it's decided, and you can tell this, um, Carenza, from your mental link to the bear but it hasn't shaken off yet it's decided that you guys look weak enough to eat oh yay yay i will tell everybody then like i think it was decided we look yummy i don't really want to be a bear snack mm. i think i'm more snack sized you're more of a main meal i would have thought yeah, yeah. and unfortunately I'm kind of an apparently the bear has decided this opposed test with stunt points of its own. Oh, all right. Because enemies mean... get stunt points too in this. So, oh. she, well, she actually is going to. It would be a. I think Ziska got. Was it Ziska or Micah got? They had stunt points on a check that they were going to use to give them something to yeah they're, they're both doing the same thing actually both okay. the bear and micah have the upper hand so for the combat they're both going to be at the top of the queue for combat and okay. i'm gonna say with the time being what it was is and as soon as this is going to become a combat now which i wasn't quite sure it was i was there was a good chance of the bear leaving there okay. that was a good option unfortunately ziska just wasn't quite didn't have enough. a game face on <laughs> yeah, so shall we end it here and have yes. a fight next time? We'll deal with the bear next stream. Okay. We will spank that bear butt next week. <laughs>
We will try to <laughs> and yes. not get eaten. <laughs> we will try and not mm-hmm. get eaten by bear. By, or by, by bear, bear. Bear, bear, butt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. Anyway. Exit left <laughs> pursued by a bear. Yes. <laughs> I have played that role. <laughs> awesome. Right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you've had fun. We will be back on Monday with the Story Squires and Wednesday Yay. next week with the Pyramid and then the following week will be our usual they're not the mini adventure group anymore, the Guild of the Feathered Spoon, Spoon and Blue Rose again, so two weeks time from Blue Rose and finding out what we do with the bear <laughs> thank you everyone for watching and thank you El- uh, Anna for being our guest still it's okay, I'm sorry for giving sass to you Brian <laughs> oh no, I love I love bring the sass <laughs> Brian put up with me and Anne Marie and our, on our one shot sassing all over the place. So. Yeah. <laughs> and and we basically it. just Charge. argued our way through what, two and a half streams? It was awesome. Pretty much, yeah. And then there was one bit where Tariel, my character, was unconscious. And so the only person Anne Marie that had left to be sassy to was Brian. <laughs> and the next <laughs> thing that the DM said, she was just to be like, nope, <laughs> sass. Sass. <laughs> I've done a lot of improv classes and I love, 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 love when people have something to play with. So I, I love it. Keep bringing it. That makes it fun for me. Yay. Yeah. And thank you, and thank Andrew. You. And yes, thank, thank you to you, the yes. people who gave us Sasperation and, and bits and subscriptions. And, and subscriptions and we need one follower to make it to 100. So if you haven't followed Ooh. us yet, please consider following us. And if you have friends... I'm assuming you all have friends. I hope you all have friends. <laughs> <laughs> Please let them know about us and how much you're enjoying watching us because we would like new followers. Yay! Yay. Awesome. We will see you all on Monday. Yay. And we will be your friend if you don't have any. Yes. <laughs> <That>. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>